Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Ace Otero and in today's Pick a Card reading, we are going to be looking at your main character energy. What is it? How much of it are you already embodying? And what does your main character energy at its full power look like? So not only that, we are also going to look at how you can be the main character in your own life in practical ways using the tarot cards. So we have four different stacks of tarot cards for you guys to choose from with four different stones. And I do want to stress that you're getting one of each type of tarot cards. So if you're feeling like drawn between different piles or you're unsure of what to pick, which to pick, just know that you're going to see all of these tarot cards in every pile. I just put a different one on top so that it might be easier to choose. So I would pick these these uh, piles based upon the stone that you feel most drawn to and the energy of the piles that you feel most drawn to. And let me be clear, it is absolutely okay to be drawn to more than one pile. It might be quite possible that you're just so multi-dimensional I can't get you in one pile and that's okay. So we have four different piles of tarot cards to choose from. Starting with the first pile, we have this Uberlite third eye stone on top. And then for pile of cards number two, we have this petrified wood heart on top. My ankle cracked. <laughs> and then for pile three, we have this labradorite dragon carving on top. And then finally for pile four, we have this red sesame jasper moon. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to, to decide which pile you feel most drawn to. Like I said, you can pick more than one. There are no right or wrongs. We're gonna start each pile by looking at your main character energy. So if you're listening to that and you're like, that is not me, uh, that's not your pile. And I would try a different one. But if you do not resonate with any of the piles, I would say, unfortunately, I probably didn't channel your energy in this reading, but feel free to check out any other readings or you know, do anything that makes you happy. So, <laughs> okay, go ahead and pause the video if you need to. to I, I think I already said that. Uh, but once you've picked your pile or piles, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box or the comment section where I will have all the timestamps listed for each pile below, and I will see you in your reading. Hi there, pile one. Welcome to your reading, and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Uberlite third eye, this is going to be your reading on your main character energy. So I'm gonna put your tarot cards off to the side for now because we first have to check and make sure that this is your pile. But I quickly did want to mention that you may not fully resonate with this energy yet, but it should sound like at the very least the person you're becoming. The way that you will know the reading is not for you is if the person I'm describing not only sounds like there's there's no elements of who you are now and you don't see yourself morphing into that person or evolving into that person in any way, like it doesn't strike a truth nerve. Even if you don't see yourself evolving into what I describe, if you're just fearful of it and kind of in doubt, but no deep down it feels right, that's an intuitive hit that you've got the right pile. But if it just feels completely wrong, it's not your pile. So to go ahead and start, we have the Hanged Man. We have Virgin's Milk. We have Grapefruit with the trigger statement being it's all my fault and the true statement being I see what I truly need. Your energetic body needs nourishment, so begin to discern physical hunger from spiritual hunger. Cherish your body and the way it supports you. We also have Disconnect. And the light attribute of Femme Fatale highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when dependency is rejected. We also have Helios with Cycles. And then moving forward, we also have Reason. We have the Crow. We have the Opaline Spectrum. We have the shadow attribute of the detective, which is voyeurism and falsifying information. And then finally, we have Freya with instability. So, or irresistibility, not instability, but I think that was a Freudian slip and I'll tell you why in a second as I fix these. So 
Pile one, let's get two things straight. You are hot and you are psychic. I don't make the rules and you don't get to tell me I'm wrong. I'm right about this. And I truly don't believe in right or wrongs, but in this case, I'm making an exception. I'm right about this. Get over it. You're hot and psychic, get over it. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about this because you're an incredibly deep individual. And I really wanna start with this little hanged man card. Uh, you could be a Pisces or have Pisces energy in your chart or really resonate with Pisces energy. I can definitely see that you are very tapped in as a child where um, you may have sensed things other people did not. I'm getting specifically, there were definitely um, people in, in whoever raised you in uh, your guardian's life who you did not trust and you knew had bad vibes, but you, I, then this is just for confirmation. There's nothing necessarily significant from this, but you may have felt like really disempowered when you were younger, because it seems like things that you picked up on were invalidated by the people around you and made you think you were wrong. And it's not that you were wrong. It's that they weren't seeing what you were seeing. And it's like, I guess right and wrongs are coming back again. So maybe, the the issue of right and wrong is something you're battling with right now um i think that your upbringing required you to have a more rigid stance on things than you truly felt were authentic to you and by that let me give you an example i'll just use a personal example so um you know, for me, I was born into a family that was Protestant Christian, and some of my earliest memories are being told things. Um, for example, God put animals on the planet for us to eat them, and that just didn't sit right with me as a child. Like, it, it, it just, it really fragmented my sense of self because I was just like, what God are you talking to? Like, I just, I, <laughs> I was very confused. And, and as a child, you know, you take what, the people raising you what they're telling you as laws they're basically like your gods when you're little and so i think that you had to really kind of surrender and let go of the truest parts of yourself um in order to fit in with your family and and i'm not I'm talking crap about my family by the way my family is wonderful um and also i have like the whole eating animals thing like I'm not saying that that's right or wrong or good or bad. I'm just using a personal example. Like when I was little, it, it just seemed wrong to me. And then I was conditioned into eating meat. And so now I do eat meat sometimes, but I don't, it, it's never been something that I've been deeply into, but it really messed with my head when I was younger because I was like, wait, what? Like, that doesn't sound right. But obviously when you're a child, even though you have such a strong intuition, you, none of that is validated because you're a child. and. I think that you had this deep awareness of when you were younger that people just didn't understand you. And I think you placed a value judgment on yourself because of that. And you also might have been raised in a family where there was a really um, intense sense of right and wrong. Like we believe in these things, these things are okay and these things are not. And I think that might have really messed with your head as well because I think that you have a more fluid way of looking at things where, you know, things aren't just black and white, they're shades of gray and, and things are more complex than just a simple answer. And I think that this is something that you're trying to break out of. And what's really beautiful, I feel like you need to know that you will break out of this. In fact, your main character energy is really centered around being unapologetically yourself becoming more aware of the person you've grown into rather than defining yourself by the person you used to be in your past, especially the person that you were when you were under the care of someone else and realizing that there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing inherently wrong with your being. You were just born into a society that couldn't understand you and couldn't support you properly. And now as you're getting older and are able to take matters of care into your own hands you can find your needs and you can find what what will work for you and what doesn't what i'm really seeing here is there's a, a deep struggle to let go of certain things and i think that there may be very difficult um, experiences in your past that you're still working through but i think one of the things that you're ready to let go of that stops you from being more of yourself is the your image of yourself especially 
when it comes to how you were conditioned to see yourself, um, mainly by like bullies and, and things like that. Uh, and they don't necessarily have to be bullies, they can be friends, because sometimes we have friends that we are like, you know, with friends like that who needs enemies. But I, I feel a deep sense of inadequacy within you, where you, I feel like you've grown in, it's imposter syndrome. This is, what I'm feeling is imposter syndrome. You've grown into someone completely different than uh, either who you thought you were going to be or what you were expected to be. But this person that you're growing into is very authentic to your true self, the person that you were when you were born, like the person that the essence of your energy like that you came into this world with. You're you're in the process right now of purging you know the societal conditions that you have taken on in order to feel safe in your environment and and you're realizing you know you know what is this safety worth if i'm not honoring myself and my soul so i think that's one thing that has really shifted for you is you're realizing how important it is to put more effort into yourself to put more energy into yourself but i think there's a real discomfort with a lot of the blessings that have come as you've aged and grown one of them being that um you're hot and i don't i mean we literally have femme fatale and freya with irresistibility body energy and you don't have to be feminine or have a feminine energy this is just attraction in general i'm just taking this as like you are an attractive person even if you don't see yourself that way doesn't matter like people are naturally very attracted to you and i think one of the things that people find I think what's difficult is that especially if you kind of had a ugly duckling syndrome where maybe you grew up less attractive and then all of a sudden, or not all of a sudden, but like, you know, you blossomed, kind of grew into yourself a little bit, uh, you know, you might have this really weird disconnect where, you know, people are really attracted to you and, you know, and give you compliments based on your physical appearance. And I think that's a really hard thing for you to handle at times because, I think that you've placed a lot of value in who you are internally and I think that a lot of your deepest connections, especially in childhood and adolescence, were based on deep connections with other people and I think that the, that was a rarity. So I, I'm sure you're likely a person who has these kind of friends that you know you may not talk to all the time but you're connected because you're you're in each other's hearts like you know each other's souls you know what i mean you're definitely a quality over quantity person which is wonderful but i think as you've gotten older because you know you you're not only a beautiful soul but you have a beautiful vessel as well you attract all types of people and that can be challenging because i think one thing that people don't realize about you is that you have less experience or you're more naive than people realize. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I just mean it in the fact that oftentimes people project what they believe onto us. And I think that in your case, because you are physically attractive, I think that people project assumptions onto you around the type of person that they think you are. Um, you know, they might project things like they think you're vain or they think you're shallow or they, they you know, whatever it may be. And that's not true. But, or they might think that you, you know, sleep around a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, some people do have judgments around that. It's not very sex positive of them, but that's not my business. Anyway, um, I can just see here that you're kind of coming into your physicality. But I think there's a part of you that's really disturbed by it. Because I think you're also becoming aware of how shallow and uh, unimpactful a lot of human connection is and, and how shallow a lot of desire of connection has been towards you. I didn't word that well at all. Um, what I meant to say was you might find that, that you have a lot of like, for example, if you're not dating anyone and you're single, you might find that you have a lot of people that are interested in you, but you might find that of the people that you actually give the time of day, most of them either don't have a whole lot to say or it's abundantly clear that they're just interested in your physicality or they're just they're just interested in something more 
shallow or surface level or even if they're coming in with genuine intentions there's like an awareness that they would not be able to see you as deeply as you could see them and it's just not what you want is the vibe that i'm getting and that's okay we all want different things but i definitely think that you're awakening to the fact that a lot of things that you thought were wrong with you are just literally aspects of yourself and the fact and you know you were just being wrongfully misguided by the people around you by society at large to make you think that these aspects of yourself needed to change i would highly recommend you look into human design it is um if you have your birth chart information, you can look up your human design chart. I think it is really fascinating and you might find it very freeing to read your chart because you might realize that there are aspects or elements in there that um, make you realize you're like you're not doing anything wrong. You're literally just acting in the ways in which you were designed. Now, one thing that I think that you're meant to, to learn and heal is the fact that you don't need to be anything other than yourself. The thing that I'm getting with the detective here is that I feel like sometimes you might worry that you're not enough or worry, especially if you're meeting new people or you're around um, people that you don't know very well, that you might need to talk yourself up. There might be insecurities around your past where you felt like you weren't good enough. And so, or you might worry that you're uninteresting or that the people attracted to you just see you as like a pretty face or um, they're only interested in your physicality. So you might feel like you need to embellish a little bit on um, your accomplishments or what you've done in the past or embellish on what you have done or haven't done. There's there's a feeling of like, with this reason card being here, recognition that you can be transparent with people and honest with people about who you truly are and they will love and adore you for that. And not only that, when you are being your true self, you will feel so much lighter and just so much more like free and lifted. Your main character energy at, at its best is something where you are taking accountability for your needs while also paying attention to what is outside of your control. One of your biggest obstacles that is shown here in this hanged man card is the fact that you have some really deeply rooted inner child triggers. And these triggers can be a gift if you use them to help yourself rather than to hurt yourself. So when you are being triggered, that is like when those inner child wounds are being triggered, I think that is something that may cause you to like for some of you spiral at times or like really get out of your element to the point where it takes you like a couple of days even to a couple of weeks to get back on track and i feel like one thing you need to know is to not beat yourself up when that happens because those triggers are showing you something important and it could be exactly that process of being out of your element out of your typical routines and cycles for you know, however long could be exactly what you need to work through that energy and purge it so that if you know you are triggered by that same thing again, it doesn't have as much of an impact as it did the last time. You learn and grow and make progress from every single thing that you do. And I think one thing that you are meant to learn um, or one thing that you're meant to realize that your main character energy is not dependent on certain attributes or certain qualities like being attractive or being very psychic and perceptive those are just gifts that you have and truthfully with ones like physical attractiveness you know those fade over time and i think that you're aware of that and there's a part of you where maybe you never wanted to get too invested in your physical appearance because you thought it was vain or shallow and maybe you know now you're starting to have more interest in it but you're having the opposite fears of like worrying about losing this attractiveness what does that mean when i don't have it anymore and i think that what you are not realizing is that your value is not placed in any of these wonderful aspects that make you you it's just a part of many and i think one thing you need to know with this um freya card and irresistibility is that people aren't just attracted to you because of your physical appearance or because of your personality like it's an energy and an essence but unfortunately well, the right people are attracted to you for all of the above reasons but unfortunately there are people who are just attracted to you because they might want to hit it you know they might just be physically attracted it might just be lust it might just be um infatuation and i think maybe you've judged yourself in the past for not knowing better and maybe um assuming that 
somebody was wanting more when they weren't maybe you shamed yourself for that or felt like you did something wrong and i feel like there's a real need to recognize that you know you're only doing the best you can at the time with the knowledge you have at the time you're you're dealing with something and i think one thing that you need to know is is that your um sense of self is definitely going to go through um shifts and phases but no matter what you are still that bitch and like that bitch is a gender neutral term by the way you are just that bitch with the crow card being here um because you are so psychic you can see things really clearly but if you're not careful it can be really easy to fall out of balance and not look at things clearly and almost kind of freak yourself out and, and work yourself up so there's a real need to know of when your gifts and abilities can help you and when they can actually hinder you a good example of that with this crow and disconnect card would be you know if you're getting really worked up and overwhelmed about say let's just say you're like really worried about the upcoming month and you really want to know what's going to happen in this upcoming month but you're trying to tap into your intuition and you're just getting fear and it's creating more fear and more panic within you that's when you want to say okay i'm not going to get any answers in this state let me disconnect let me take a step back let me kind of just breathe and not focus on this and i'll come back to this when i'm in a calmer state and i can approach things in a more um what would in a more stable way and in a less um emotional way just in a more in a more neutral way i guess that's what i would say because i think one thing is is that you might mix like sometimes with just fear or emotion with genuine intuitive insight and i think that you are learning that process of discernment um I also think you're learning to discern between genuine people and not genuine people. Um, and it's only through experience that we really learn those things. So once again, please don't beat yourself up. But you're meant to know that not everyone deserves a piece of you, Pile One. And I think that you might be someone where you may feel like you need to give to others and you need to um, be there for others. And I think what you're realizing is that if you just continue to give yourself away there's going to be none of you left and so the most powerful version of you is a version of you where you realize that everyone else is just as human as you are and they are just as capable of helping themselves or seeking the help that they need to deal with their challenges and it's not your job and your problem to fix someone or to help someone and be someone's free therapist i just feel like for you there is a need to recognize that there's a need to zoom out i think that's the biggest thing actually is one of the biggest things that you were conditioned to do by your upbringing is to zoom in and not just zoom in but zoom in on you could say negative things or perceived flaws um zoomed in on certain desires I feel like there's just times where you forget that you're connected to everyone and that you're not meant to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. No one is. That's why there's billions of us here. Like, helping the earth is not a one-man job. Like, we got to do it together. We're in this together. And I think one thing with this opaline spectrum, like, when you're in your main character energy, is realizing that you are not separate from your fellow man and the fact and in fact you know you're at one not only with fellow humans but with the earth and its creatures and the divine and spirit and just recognizing that the stories you've told yourself about your past don't have to define you and you can always start a new story in the present but not only that realizing that your sense of self is going to change over time and that's okay and what's going to work for you is going to change over time and that's also okay i think one thing that you're healing is an all or nothing type of mentality and the best way to do that is to find balance instead of doing like a, a way i could explain all or nothing and balance okay let's say let's say for dinner you want pasta and pizza you want both but you're like i i or you can't choose between pasta and pizza pa pasta and pizza but you can't you're having a hard time choosing you're like i don't know which to pick 
let's say and, and in this case let's say they're free you're not buying two okay but this is free pasta free pizza the only limit you have are the confines of your own stomach in the, a case where this would be balanced instead of depriving yourself of the pasta or the pizza you get maybe a little bit of pizza and a little bit of pasta and whatever else you want and you know have a little bit of everything that's satisfying on your plate but you don't necessarily have to have all of it. It's not a great example, but the point of what I'm trying to say is, is that I think that you operate best when you're not denying yourself things, when you're not forcing yourself to push extremes. In fact, you work best when you're well rested, when you're feeling good about, you know, it's not about anything, it's just feeling good. Like, you know, whatever, whatever, health habits you have in order to feel good you know prioritizing those but also not depriving yourself of you know things that you enjoy you know moderation i think is a big thing for you like recognizing that you don't have to be so extreme with how you do things but you can just instead you know do a little bit of each get a little bit of things done do a little bit of this do a little bit of that but you're truly meant to be someone who looks at things from a more detached perspective where because that's kind of where your power is i think that when you get too zoomed in especially to connections with other people it's hard for you to remember that your perspective matters too your feelings matter too and your needs and desires and wants matter too i think it's quite possible that you've had to deal with um people that were at the very least like emotionally or mentally abusive um and I think that that has, I think that you were tricked into, not necessarily tricked, but like based on the people around you, like it's almost like you were just conditioned to believe that you are the problem. And I think what you're realizing wasn't the, you weren't the problem, it was the environment, I guess is the point of what I'm trying to say. But your main character energy, you and your full main character energy is someone who trusts their intuition, someone who is unafraid to be their authentic self and speak their truth, someone who trusts where they're heading and someone who knows how to meet their own needs and knows when to ask for help and meeting needs if you can't meet them yourself. You are someone who flows with the cycles of life rather than trying to force an outcome or force something to happen. You go with the flow rather than trying to control. And the beautiful thing is when you go with the flow, you attract instead of chasing. When you sit in that unity, that oneness, and you know just embrace the being that you are, that is what truly makes you irresistible seeing your light and knowing that it's valuable and holding it in with that reason energy you know reasons like it, it holds something it's a bond but it's still light and so i think that your energy is something where it's very light it's very beautiful it's very etherical etherical that's not a word it's very etheric but it's also strong and one thing that you're meant to learn is how to hold your center and hold your energy when you're interacting with other people because it's just as humans are social creatures it is impossible to fully isolate yourself from people and i mean well i mean it is possible but the effects aren't great on your brain so i think what you like the the thing that's going to help you the most is recognizing that you are here at on earth for earth school and you are learning lessons and that things are going to shift and change recognizing that there is a lot that's out of your control and those things are not worth stressing yourself out over but also one thing that i think that you need to be really kinder to yourself about is the fact that i think that you really beat yourself up about um what is it past mistakes you've made like you're that person to be up at night like thinking about something you said to someone five years ago and it's just like you need to stop beating yourself up for things that for being human you're, you're beating yourself up for being human and it's just not right i definitely think you might have gifted child syndrome or really um have just struggled to find your sense of self in adulthood and i think one thing that you need to know is that you're discovering who you are and you're growing into who you are 
And a lot of the biggest lessons we learn is just through living. And I think that you're learning to find the balance between disconnecting from life and engaging with it actively so that you can have the most aligned perspective. But I'm feeling really called to go ahead and get into the tarot cards now. So if that, if that sounds like the person you're becoming, let's go ahead and see how you can ground, ground this energy or improve upon this energy. So <laughs> to start, we have the Hermit. We have the Ace of Pentacles. We have the King of Pentacles. We have the Fool. Ah, Cicero! I literally got these because I was like, I want Skyrim nails again. And the Dark Brotherhood is like my favorite uh, quest line. So yeah, that's why I did these nails. Um, but I love that you guys got Cicero. So, And we also have the Seven of Wands. I love this. I think this is so interesting. If you watch Adventure Time, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is Marceline's dad, right? Um, the King of Pentacles. So I'll start with the Hermit. I think that's a great place to start because this disconnect kind of says the same thing as the Hermit. You might think that you have Hermit modes, but you're not actually, there's a difference between isolating yourself and going into hermit mode. Like the hermit doesn't go into his cave to watch TikTok for six hours, no offense. But uh, the hermit goes into his cave to self-reflect, to detach, to literally disconnect. Like this is what this disconnect card really talks about is like connect, disconnect from everything that stops you from going within and In your case, I think that you may not get the most out of your isolation periods because you spend those times in isolation kind of distracting yourself from yourself rather than going within and seeing what your inner self has to offer you. And I think that that is one of the biggest things that is stopping you from feeling freer to take action. But I feel like one thing that you need to know is that you're a work in progress and there's never gonna be a finite point where you wake up and you're like, yes, I am the main character. Your main character energy is gonna be the realization that first of all, main characters are flawed as fuck. Like, let's remember that. Well, typically, that's not true. There are lots of characters where they're unrealistically written and they're like perfect and way over the top. But you know you know what characters I think are great? Um, the ones in Neon Genesis Evangelion because they're real. They are real, they're realistic, especially given <laughs> how insane the plot is. And it's just, it's just, it's just real and it's raw and it's human. And I think what you need to understand is, is that that's what your experience is meant to be. I feel like you need to hear this, especially if you're Gen Z, uh, cause I think Gen Z kind of, and I'm a part of this, but I think Gen Z has an obsession with like cur curating like an identity or an aesthetic. And I always struggled with that. I don't know about you, but I always struggle with that because like I've never, I love so many aesthetics. How am I supposed to choose one? And plus it's expensive. Like what if I, ch I mean also with ADHD, it's like I, I could hyper fixate on one aesthetic, spend all my money on that and then be like, crap, I don't like that anymore. So I, for me, it's just, it doesn't work for me. But I think one thing that you're meant to realize is that your life is not a curated aesthetic. Your life is not something that you're meant to just show to others and in in a very like, curated way that's that's just I feel like you're expecting to wake up one morning and feel like you've made it and feel like this is it and like like this is it this is life I'm living I'm a human like and I feel like what you need to understand is that those moments are not those moments don't come from like a sudden realization externally to you they come from a sudden realization internally and I think that there's a lot of wisdom that you've gained from your past experiences and a lot of wisdom that you've gained from, uh, what is it? There's a lot of wisdom that you've gained from, why did I just blank all of a sudden? I got distracted again by this, by this king of pentacles but we'll get there this ace of pentacles 
is meant to talk of the point of what I'm trying to say is that your experience you should not value having emotions and having highs and lows as you failing at life or doing something wrong life is literally cycles life is literally highs and lows there are times where we feel very at peace but truth be told when you're at peace for a very 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 long time you can start to feel very disconnected and detached from humanity and that can be good and healthy for you but sometimes it's good and healthy to be involved with humanity and you know engaging with life and living with life and it's about knowing what you need in the moment you know sometimes we do need to just find peace find zen and disconnect and other times we need to be active and engaged with our environment and our community and the people we care about so for you it's recognizing that you're not going to have all the answers tomorrow you're not going to have all the answers and that come in a magic book your job right now is learning yourself and learning what works best for you not what works best for someone else but what works best for you and recognizing that just because something doesn't work well for you uh doesn't mean that you failed at something. It just means you need to try something else. I also think that you are meant to do something that is meant to bring you stability and success unless you've already invested within this. Um, the Ace of Pentacles is all about opportunities and something that can be grown. This can often have to do with business, job, career, anything like that. Um, and I feel like with this, Spirit is kind of saying any solid opportunities you take like even if they don't turn out the way that you pictured them there's value and wisdom to be learned you know pearls are formed from irritants that get into an oyster's mouth and they're and they're formed over time and so i feel like spirit is saying here the lessons that you may not understand why you're going through certain lessons right now or, or in general not just right now like in the future because we do have cycles here so there are going to be times where you feel really there are going to be times where you feel just so in tune with yourself and you're like I, like i'm killing it i'm doing amazing like fuck everyone like i am the main character get out of my way and there are also going to be times where you are like you know just not feeling great feeling like life's getting you down um like uh shoot what is it what season of rick and morty is it whatever season where jerry has more dominance in the social hierarchy than rick at that point in the series i feel like that is something that you need to be aware of like there are gonna be shifts and things where you feel like you're on top or you feel like you're on bottom or you just feel like what is the point of this like but there's a point to everything in your experiences and wisdom from all of your experiences, not just the positive ones. Because I feel like you only reward yourself or are kind to yourself when things are going well. But when things are difficult, I think that you kind of revert back into this self-hatred mode or this um, feeling like it's all your fault and like, you're going through this bad cycle because you're not doing something right and it might be that you're doing nothing wrong and maybe just the the like the transits for example are so that you're dealing with extra inner child triggers or something like that it, the point of what i'm trying to say that i'm not saying very well um is that you're going to go through cycles of highs and lows and what you need to realize is that these highs and lows are not a merit of your worth they are just life playing out and being life and what I think you may beat yourself up for is that during the difficult times you may feel like you're wasting time if you work for yourself you might feel like you're losing money or you know time is money if I'm not working I'm not growing and it's like that's not correct because actually a lot of our growth and a lot of our um, healing can come from taking a step back you know, from the things that we're working on and from, and I can give you another example of this. Um, in March, there was a three week period where I didn't upload and I tried and tried and tried to film and I just couldn't. And I just kept beating myself up and I thought like, did I lose the ability to read? Like, am I screwed? And you know, that was just fear. It was all just fear. But I learned so much from that period of time. And I'm so grateful for that period of time because it helped me come back to like 
to you know my channel and things like that with a refreshed perspective and it helped me face a lot of my fears that I had and realize that they were just mental they were just in my head and I think one thing that you're real that you may not realize in the moment and, and cause yourself more stress is that there is a purpose and a reason as to why you're going through these cycles and instead of trying to figure out why you're going through those cycles or needing to figure it out instead going with the flow with the full card here you're meant to live life in a more joyous state you're meant to follow your intuition and follow what's what's igniting you if that makes sense but i also think that there is an element of you where you're meant to kind of embrace your naivety and meant to embrace the fact that you have I'm not comparing you to Cicero, but it's kind of funny that I, I'm thinking of the def, like the main definition of the Fool card. Cicero would definitely be a, a shadow energy of the Fool, but the light energy of the Fool is a willingness to take a leap of faith, a willingness to take risks, a willingness to jump into the unknown and see what's there. And I think what's beautiful for you is that when you're in your main character energy, there's so much less fear when it comes to taking a leap of faith because you're able to trust yourself and know that you will be carried through this process, whether it's with you, just with you being with yourself or with the divine. Now, with this King of Pentacles here, this is really, really interesting. So for some of you, I can see there is, you might be already doing this or there might be a desire here to be in this King of Pentacles energy. I think this King of Pentacles energy either represents um, a guardian figure in your life, like a father um, or a partner, a serious long-term partner, or it's the idealized version of yourself. And I think that if this is a parent, I think that one thing that you are meant to be aware of is that you are not your parents. And that, you know, one shadow that a lot of parents have is not recognizing that they do not own their children after they are grown up. Like, you know, there are a lot of parents who have a hard time letting go or have a hard time letting their children be their own individuals. And I think one thing that you're meant to realize is that you are not meant to be just like someone who raised you or you're not meant to have the same perspective as someone who raised you you're allowed to be different and i'm pretty sure i mean i haven't seen adventure time in a long time but um i'm pretty sure this king of coins his daughter marceline like they don't get along very well her and her dad don't get along very well and i think one thing that you're meant to know is is that if you have deep deep troubles with you know someone that you love but you know doesn't understand you there's a lot of opportunities for healing and growth here, should you want them. Obviously, I'm not saying to put yourself in a situation with someone that you don't want to be in. But if you're wanting to heal the relationship between you and this person, if it is an external person, I think that you are being asked to look at how you and this person are the same. And the fact that you and this person are not the same in the sense that they've had a different upbringing than you but you're still one and that you don't, you can agree to disagree and that you don't have to agree on everything. But I also am getting for a lot of you, and I, I would, and I think that goes for those of you who where this King of Pentacles might be um, a partner. I think you might be encouraged to recognize that like your partner doesn't have to reflect everything within you. Um, and in fact, you might even want to look at where you might be projecting things onto your partner that are actually within yourself. Um, and you may, want to spend some time away if you've been spending a lot of time with your partner as well you may want to spend some time kind of in hermit mode but like not but don't waste that time like distracting yourself like actually go within but for those of you where this king of pentacles is an ideal you might be really wanting to um you know create a solid substantial future for yourself where you are abundant and you can not only nurture and provide for yourself but nurture and provide for others but i think you have a hard time uh believing that you're worthy of receiving this abundance or feeling like anyone who has money or anyone who is financially stable in that way is automatically evil or automatically 
um, doing wrong things in order to get there. And what I will say about that is that it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard to do anything business related and be 100% ethical. And I know that sounds like really messed up, but like, I'm not saying that from the standpoint of like, you should, like, you don't even, you don't have to have ethics in your business. Like, I mean, you should, but like, but that's my opinion. So even then you can discard that. But the point of what I'm trying to say here is that it's not, it's not evil for you to have enough to take care of yourself and nurture yourself. And I think there's a need to recognize that you don't have to keep, keep suppressing your desire to have more and to reap more abundance from your work or from what you're doing. You're not bad for wanting that. In fact, you can be blessed very greatly by doing the things that make you feel that make you feel good. And I think the point of this card for everyone here is the best way to know whether... I'm so... I, okay. <laughs> I keep pausing with, with this energy because it's it's so meticulous. I feel like one thing you need to know is that you can only do the best you can and that there are certain limitations with how the world is right now. Like, case in point, like, fast fashion is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. But there are so many issues around it and it's such a complex thing that like it's just like there are all these issues and we have solutions for it but what's gonna be best what's gonna work what's feasible for each person what isn't how can we even there's just there's so many things that are so much bigger than ourselves and I, I that is the point of what i'm trying to say so everything that i'm talking about like i'm not trying to like spell my opinions or be like you know i my i'm just trying to use examples to to make it more to hopefully make things more clear but the point of what i'm trying to say is is that there may need to be a level of acceptance that there are just a lot of awful things in this world outside of your control but you can play your part by serving in a way in which you know you can con contribute to to humanity to yourself to the earth in whatever way when you serve others life will automatically serve you in return like this is really kind of a what you put in you get out kind of energy here and i think with this king of pentacles one thing that you're really being encouraged to be aware of is the fact that um abundance money doesn't have to feel dirty you can you can get you can reap abundance in ethical and positive ways however a lot of the people with a ton <laughs> uh you know listen not judging not say i'm it i don't know i don't know anything i am just a girl reading tarot cards but the point of what i'm trying to say is is that i recognize that you have wounds around receiving and having abundance and worrying that if you have abundance that makes you bad like i just heard my head eat the rich and i think one thing that you need to understand is that one uh your Having enough and then a little bit extra does not make you a bad person. And also it does not make you a bad person to want to be financially abundant, to want to have a lot of money. But one thing you need to understand is, is that you cannot make that your life. If you make money and material objects your life, you will lose your soul so fast. And I think that is that is kind of like the, the one of the main points I've been getting to with this card is like, wanting material abundance is a wonderful thing and we all deserve to have our material needs taken care of um and we all deserve to fight to make that happen but what you need to understand is is that if you're placing a lot of your worth in this idea of like i need to be a successful business person for example so my father will accept me or something like that uh that's not gonna help you here because you're going to do all of that work and then you're going to realize that you don't feel any different than you did when you started and and it's almost like the spirit is trying to get you to see the wisdom before you start going down a path that isn't aligned with you when when life feels like such a challenge that 
all you can do is just get through the day, that is a sign that you're not living in alignment. And unfortunately, there are times where life just takes us out of alignment and we just have to deal with life. And that is not your fault or something that you should beat yourself up for. But it's also something that you have to be aware of like, okay, I just have to accept this. Like another dumb example, like let's say you got a new house and you found the most amazing couch, but it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get it for like 40 weeks because all furniture is on back order right now because of COVID, you know? Instead of trashing your house and being like, well, my house is ruined for 40 weeks because I'm not gonna get my couch. Like, obviously I don't think that you would be that upset about something like that, but recognizing like, okay, this is not, my dream couch is not gonna happen for 40 weeks. So what kind of cute furniture can I find that's, not gonna break the bank but that'll do until then like there's just a need to like be more malleable with with the challenges that life has coming your way and to go with the flow of those challenges and also those eases because i think that when things get to things get easier for you you might start to think oh no what's gonna happen it's almost like your main problem actually is 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 the hangman the hangman knows how to surrender and accept what's happening around him he knows that he really can't control what's happening. This is an energy of surrender. And surrender is something that you know how to do in your soul because that is a, a skill and a gift of your inner child. But I think what one of your biggest blockages is surrendering in general. I think that you have a hard time surrendering. And I think that you are probably conditioned to be someone who is a fighter, who doesn't give up, who pushes for things. And that's wonderful. But sometimes it's more helpful to let go of something than it is to hold on to something. But sometimes it's easier. Like, for example, if, if, if this King of Pentacles represents a guardian figure, you know, a lot of times when we tell our parents like things they've done to us, they're like, I don't remember that. That didn't happen. Things like that. And it's like, well, you know, the ax doesn't remember, but the tree does. And I think recognizing that will help you a little bit to realize that, you know, oftentimes the people that we love that hurt us, they are often trying to just love you in the way that they know how. And unfortunately, sometimes that can be not not what's best for us i'll give you another example my older brother you know he didn't like how sensitive i was when i was a child and in his mind he thought by being you know the tough older brother and being tough on me that it would help me toughen up because he didn't want me to go to school and be bullied by people well i was anyway and it didn't help me at all and it and it created more of a, a divide between us and brought us together but when we grew up and we sat down and we talked about those things and he saw that, you know, my sensitivity is a gift and the fact that, you know, there wasn't anything wrong with me. And at the same time, I was able to recognize that he wasn't just bullying me because he didn't like me, but, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to help me in, a, in his, in his own way, you know, obviously it's convoluted and not what was needed, but it was, he was doing it, believe it or not, out of love. And it, and for me, when I heard him say that, it, it made more sense. It was like, you know, he wasn't coming from a place of trying to tear me down. He just wanted what was best for me and he wanted to protect me, but he didn't have the best way of doing that. And so it created more of a divide. But, you know, now we have a wonderful relationship and I feel like those challenges that we had growing up only made us closer because we understand each other more deeply now. and releasing that stuff from the past really just it just it just helps at least help me let go of a lot of wounds and insecurities I had and so I think in your case I'm sorry I'm using so many examples by the way you guys just have me talking and talking I feel like I've got so much to tell you but with this king of pentacles here I feel like what you're meant to recognize is that you know sometimes people are trying to love us in their own convoluted ways that doesn't mean that you should put up with their behavior or accept it but it also means that you know if you want to move forward and if you want to have a better relationship with the people that you love and care about oftentimes releasing the past and you know agreeing to disagree and and trying to see see the commonalities in one one another and and wanting to um 
understand one another is really helpful. But, you know, obviously if the person on the receiving end refuses to see who you are, refuses to see the value in how you are designed and how you are created. So, you know, like obviously like my brother and I couldn't have healed that if he wasn't able to see how my sensitivity was a gift and how, you see what I'm saying? Like when he realized it, he was like, wow, I, I am a caveman. He, when he learned I did all this intuitive stuff, he was, he was just like, I just realized I'm like a caveman. And ironically, he does have 92% more Neanderthal DNA than all other 23andMe customers. So Neanderthal confirmed. Anyway, let's get back to your reading. I think what you need to know is, is that one huge lesson you're meant to learn is when to fight and when to not. In the sense that knowing when something is worth fighting for and when something is a losing battle uh, for example, um, advocating for yourself or fighting for some sort of position in front of your boss, you know, that would be a good example of fighting for what you deserve. Whereas, you know, someone posting something really ignorant on social media that you recognize is dumb and ignorant, but you know that nothing you could say would change this person's mind and they're probably just looking for an argument anyway. So that's probably not a battle I'm going to engage in. But the battle to show your boss that you deserve this promotion, that's what you're meant to invest your energy in. It's almost like the best way you can integrate your main character energy is to recognize that the best parts of you are the fact that you you need to be able to see the best parts of yourself that others see in, others see in you and and a lot of that comes through exploration a lot of that comes through things like meditation and learning and growing but i think one thing that you need to realize is that you're not meant to be fighting life when you're in alignment with life things flow easier and it's easier to flow with the cycles and not only that it, it helps you save your energy so that you know when it's time to fight. You know when it's time to um, stand up for yourself or put yourself out there and or work for something. Like you're fierce. And I think what you need to know is, is that you're a formidable opponent and it and it, it might actually be worth your time to recognize what is really what is really worth my time and what is not. Because I definitely think that there are some people, um, or not just some people, but just certain energies in your life where you may just drain your energy trying to prove a point. It's like you may waste your energy trying to show a colorblind person that yellow exists. Or like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to, we're going to move on. I, I Did that make sense? Um, I hope so. I, I hope so. I've, I've given so many examples. Like, but also colorblind people know that yellow exists. I, that's such a dumb... I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is, is like getting someone to see something that they can't see is try, is like trying to invent a new color. I dare you to try to invent a new color. I certainly can't. Um, but anyway, it's, it's almost just like trusting yourself to, to follow the flow, trusting the universe to lead you where you need to go, and recognizing that you can trust yourself to take these leaps of faith. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. So I want to go ahead and see now what you can expect in the near future or just anything spirit wants you to be aware of. These might also be signs that you're on the right path or I'm just kind of taking these as they, as they go. So take them as they resonate. But to start, we have barrel you feel something is lacking in your life perhaps love money or goals and this actually really connects to this um grapefruit energy because it says your energetic body needs nourishment so begin to discern physical hunger from spiritual hunger cherish your body in the way it supports you so you know we can often use for example adhd years often binge on food when they're low on dopamine, even though they may not necessarily be hungry. Like I do that. Like I just find myself binging on food because I, I just wanted the dopamine, but I didn't, even though I wasn't hungry, I just wasn't thinking about that in the moment. And then I just, you know, so becoming conscious of like your body's responses and, and, and what cycles you go through, what cycles, the best way you could become the main character is study yourself so that you feel less bad about being yourself and can 
own yourself more in in your environment and when you do face criticism or you do face um people that don't agree with you or want to tear you down it, it doesn't take away from you it just you you see things more clearly in a more objective way for what they are which is typically you know someone projecting their own insecurities or someone feeling triggered or someone you know it's just it's just so often it has so little to do with you but ah perfect okay so i guess this is this is a sign that you are going to be supported and that you should not do anything for money that does not feel right in your soul um, I like, I think an example of this I, I'm thinking of is um, Jeanette McCurdy just had her new memoir come out and she talked about how Nickelodeon had offered her like 300 grand to not talk about her experiences and she didn't take it. And like, that's such a good example of why you shouldn't, you know, settle for something that doesn't feel right in your heart because, you know, now she's made an amazing book, you know, has shed so much light on the struggles that like, I haven't heard it's still in the mail I haven't read it yet but like from what I from what I've seen you know she's really shedding light on a lot of important truths that we need to know about you know truths in Hollywood truths truths in all these different things and I think one thing that you need to know is is that um you're not meant to settle like for example if I just I don't know why I just thought of this but like if you had a family business, but you hated that family business, it's not something that you enjoy, you don't want to do that, but you know that you would be taken care of, that's when you want to ask yourself, well, is having less, is having more worth not feeling great all the time? Is having less, or is having more worth being miserable? And how can I manifest abundance in ways that are aligned with my soul and heart? I think that's what you're meant to do. And the truth of the matter is the universe is saying you will reap abundance when you serve. And I feel like I want to do a reading on how you, how you can best serve, but like when you serve others, when you serve yourself, and like that's the thing too, is like when you focus on your self care and things like that, it also helps you. It, it helps you be in a position to give to others more freely because you're giving from a place of an overflowing cup rather than giving away the water that you need to drink first. Um, but we also have firecracker excitement. So I definitely think that there's exciting things coming your way. Um, but I also think that this is about, you know, what lights your fire. I think that you're really being encouraged to um, follow excitement and what lights you up, not what makes you feel just like makes you want to dread life and things like that and we also have ring a marriage will take place either romantic or business this is really interesting so you might actually um create some sort of like hybrid business or um maybe you will marry someone that uh where you both create something whatever this is um it's definitely something good and I think one thing that you need to know is, is that you're in this process of knowing yourself and, and, know, and knowing what's true to you so that you can make these very important decisions from a place of truth and from a place of wisdom rather than a place of fear, uncertainty, and uh, ignorance. So we're going to go ahead now and finish off with some advice for you. This is definitely you probably longer than I was anticipating it being, but I hope, I hope it's resonated so far. So to start, we have a stone that you can work with and yours is green calcite. Green calcite is the emo, honest to a fault, believes in storybook endings, tree hugger of the calcite family. Who needs it? Anyone who finds themselves lost in the forest of doubt without a map and Libras. I love this deck because it's like, they'll say like, who needs it? And it, it's always, it seems like a subtle, like drag to whatever sign they talk about. So Libras in this case, and we do have air signs here. Um, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius in that crow card, but where to put it against your chest when making important decisions regarding around, regarding how you want to spend the finite precious time you have on earth. So yeah, that's the thing. Like we do have this 
kind of illusion especially within like I'm, I'm just gonna speak for like American culture we have this illusion around wealth and the fact that you know wealth or nice things are is gonna is gonna make us happy or make us feel legit and it's just not the case it's just not but when to use it is when your heart is asking for something but you la 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 aren't listening the heart wants what it wants the mind wants what it thinks the heart should want call in the energy of green calcite to nudge that push and pull in the heart's favor live out your heart's desire but we also have a new beginning have the courage to open a new door so i think spirit is really asking you to be the to follow down the path that feels right to you you know obviously um is loud outside i don't know what is going on there but um you know obviously it takes courage to change it takes courage to grow and evolve but i feel like i need you to know that that your evolution is not something that you need to force it is natural like the same way a snake sheds its skin you will shed yours as well and it's not going to be something that you necessarily have to do consciously it will happen over time but slowly but surely you'll peel off those parts of yourself that are no longer authentic to you we all <laughs> i love when i'm right <laughs> surrender to your intuition tune into your inner voice be aware of any gut feelings flashes knowings or aha moments that come through to guide you we also have rajas which i'm gonna read that in the book uh because I think this deck is really awesome and I'll go into it in a second. But we have one more advice card and it is play. How we play is different and unique to each of us. Whatever form of play we engage in helps us lose track of time and become less self-aware all while reducing stress. Play can be competitive. It can be daydreaming or joking around with friends. Reflect on what your favorite form of play was growing up. How can you incorporate that into your life today? That is really interesting because I just got a download about play. Um probably like two weeks ago, and I want to tell you guys about it. Um, my guides were telling me that, you know, my old forms of play are not necessarily going to be what stimulates and excite excites me anymore. So for example, you know, I've always loved video games. And um, as you can see, me talking about Elder Scrolls and uh, shit like that, but it just doesn't s sustain me in the same way. Like I, I don't do it as much. And I I just don't enjoy it as actually that's not true the only no the only game that I don't enjoy that much is The Sims 4 and that's because if you play The Sims 4 you'll know but you know I had downloads about okay it's time to find new versions of play and what works for you and who what the fuck is going on outside shut the fuck up anyway um the the way in which you play needs to change as you grow. Like, you're not going to find the same things as interesting as a child as you do as an adult. Sometimes you will. Sometimes you won't. You know, like when you play or watch nostalgic things and you realize it's not as good as you remember, I feel like one thing you're being encouraged to do is to explore new forms of play and forms of play that... Um, Maybe you've always wanted to try, but you've never done. I'll give you I'll give you a good recommendation. Axe throwing is really fun. You should go axe throwing or something like that. But let's go ahead and read Rajas and what it says. Um, maybe tigers are a significant. Uh... Okay, so it says dynamic movement, aggression, and energy. You're in a place of movement, making the most of each day. You're passionate and excited about the task at hand and pushing the limits of what you believed possible for yourself. Rajas is needed to bring our desires into action and you are deep in the development phase. You have already achieved many great accomplishments because of your determination and more await in the near future. However, remember to balance action with rest. Otherwise, you will lose sight of your true goal in the pursuit of achieving more. Yes, that is exactly what I said. Thank you, Rajas. Thank you, A Yogic Path. Thank you. Because that is what I said. And um, that is also where I'm going to leave this reading. Um, but I do want to say uh, thank you for, for sticking, sticking with me through this whole reading. So 
I think that is where I'm going to leave things. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and for um, watching my ads or letting them play in the background. That's the simplest and easiest way to support me. But if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can like this video. You can comment down below. Let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell to be notified whenever I upload a new reading. Um, you can also check out my merch, which is linked below, and my social medias, which are linked below as well. But that's all I have for you guys, so thank you so much for watching and for being here. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, whenever it is that you're watching this video, and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye! Hi there, Pile 2! Welcome to your reading, and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Petrified Wood Heart and the Stack of Tarot Cards, this is going to be your reading on... What is your main character energy? How can you ground it into the now? So on and so forth. Um, once again, another reading that's been longer than anticipating, but they've been really enjoyable. Or well, I've done one, but it was enjoyable. So anyway, let's go ahead and start by looking at your main character energy in its purest form. I do want to mention that the way to know, you may not resonate with everything here because it's most likely that you are growing into your main character energy. So you'll probably find aspects of yourself that you resonate with, but maybe aspects of yourself that don't necessarily sound like you, or you might be kind of afraid of the descriptions of them because of what it might take to reach that point. But you'll know it doesn't resonate if what I'm describing, you're like, nah, that's not you. And there's like, not even a trace of a possibility that you could grow into something like that. You'll know if it's not meant for you or not. Um, but, and with that being said, doubt is not the same thing as something not resonating. You'll know if something resonates. Doubt is just a similar energy to fear. So let's go ahead and start. To start, we have the Empress. We have self-worth, the trigger statement being I am disgusting, and the true statement being I am a miracle. Please be gentle and love yourself. Provide your body mind with what it truly needs to carry you on your journey. That just like made me emotional. Oh my god. Okay, we'll talk about that. We also have lead. We have the light attribute of shapeshifter, skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness, ability to see the potential in everything. We also have healthy boundaries. Oh, I guess that's, I thought that was a piece of paper. It's just part of the art. Um, and we also have Nuada. I go over here. Oh my God. Okay. I'll fix them in a second. We also have the dragon and we have the azure vault or the blue temple. We have the shadow attribute of priest, which is violates the trust of your spiritual community, seduced by your own spiritual role. We also have serenity. And finally, we have Mott with justice. I really love your energy, Pyle too and I really honestly like the two things I have to say first of all you're such an old soul like I, you may not believe in past lives or anything like that but if you do I definitely think that you have had past lives um in many many different places like I'm hearing ancient Sum Sum Sumeria Sum was it Sumer or Sum Sumeria I know there's Sumerians like Assyria not Assyria, but A-S-S-Y-R-I-A, Mesopotamia, like, you've really been here since the Fertile Crescent, like, a while. Um, I, I think that you have had lifetimes, like, in ancient Egypt, and, um, well, the two that are being shown here in Mott and Nuada is Celtic, which Celtic is, it, it, that's a, a large group, so that could be a lot of different things, and Mott, which is ancient Egypt, so, uh, or just Egyptian in general. So uh, you could really resonate with those places or those time periods or something like that. But I wanna start by talking about this Empress card because this Empress card is meant to represent your inner child. And I definitely think that you have an incredibly precious inner child that is very feminine, that loves cute things, that loves fairy tales and storybooks and that loves 
animals and loves cuddly things and sparkly things like when I picture your inner child I just picture you like you know wearing for example your mom's shoes or stealing your older sister's makeup or something like that and and I really feel like I need to stress you have a feminine energy that does not mean that you are a biological woman or identify as a woman it just means that you have a lot of feminine energy and depending on the environment that you were born into and the body you were born into it may not have been socially acceptable for you to be your authentic self and you have and i think for you that was definitely i think it's going to be a range for some of you the femininity within you may have been supported but for others it may have been suppressed or you may have felt like there was something wrong with you because you were more feminine or more soft and i think the thing is is like with feminine energy it's like you're just a very precious sweet child like i think that you are someone who you know like if someone hit you i i can't see you hitting them back i see you crying for sure but like not hitting them back you know what i mean i feel like you're someone who you just don't especially as a child like you just didn't have a mean bone in your body you were just so loving and i think that you were just really fascinated by mother nature really fascinated by life and i think that just the, the feminine aspects of being and and like just feminine your feminine energy just just a natural part of you and i think that um it's a part of you that you've never let go of but i do think depending on who you are and what your upbringing and experience has been um your feminine energy may have been suppressed or it may have been i i i guess for some of you it could have been uh cultivated and supported but i think more than anything for a lot of you you either suppressed your own feminine energy because you may have felt like it made you weak or you were forced to do that by people in your life or in order to be safe you had to do that and the biggest thing that is so huge here the fact that we have the, the empress is the third card and the solar plexus chakra is the third chakra and that's the chakra that's coming through here the dragon card represents the solar plexus chakra it's a spirit card it is fierce and your main character energy is very fierce and i'm gonna go into it a bit deeper but this card here about self-worth is so important because your solar plexus area it's like it's, it's the third chakra up, the yellow one, and it, it's all about your sense of self. It's all about your sense of confidence, your sense of self-worth, your self-esteem, um, lots of different things. But uh, in your case, I think that you are really conditioned to believe that, which I think honestly is, is a running theme, which will be a running theme in all the readings, I'm gonna predict. Uh, you know, there were aspects of you that you were told were not okay or were told that you could not be. And I th probably led to a lot of self-hatred within yourself and led you to believe that you weren't worthy or that there was something inherently wrong with you. And a lot of, a lot of your main character energy is giving yourself the love or coming into your main character energy is a lot about embracing the natural energy that you have this this natural empress energy which is so beautiful you could also have um taurus or libra placements you certainly don't have to and uh, the solar plexus also represents fire energies so um aries leo sag but libra especially between the empress and not uh but i feel like you've definitely I, depending on where you're at in your journey a lot of you probably have already realized that this um that your femininity is not something to be ashamed of and that is something that you deserve to honor within yourself and protect but i also think that this empress energy within you is something that is going to help you 
manifest the life that you're wanting to live and the dreams that you have. It's really interesting because we have this, uh, we have this split between like the etheric, uh, subtle realms and the hard earthly material realms. And I think that you're meant to operate in both and have a strong sense of self in both. For some of you, um, I feel called with this shapeshifter energy as well as uh, dragon and the empress because the empress is all about flows and cycles and new auto with perfection. Um, you might be gender fluid or your identity or something like that might shift over time. But honestly, this doesn't even have to be something as like external or well, I guess it's not an external thing. It's just a thing. It's all it's internal for you, but external for everyone else. Anyway, um, that's not the point. I'm just getting distracted by my own thoughts, which is something you might do as well. So hi, you're in good company. But <laughs> I think for you, you know, part of your main character energy is not a fixed state of being, but rather an unapologetic awareness of who you are in that moment and not allowing anyone else's ignorance, projections, misunderstandings, or anyone's desire to throw rocks at your light cannot penetrate that barrier because you're a damn dragon. Like I'm I'm getting I'm getting this image. Um, if you've ever seen the cinematic classic Barbie is Rapunzel, which you should have, and if you haven't, oh my god, get cultured now. Um, there is a dragon that is friends with Barbie, and her name is Penelope, and she's very afraid of doing dragon things, like breathing fire and flying really high. And her dad is like, you know, it's like, for example, there's a scene where her dad's like, hey, fly, fly over this thing. And she's like, oh, that's too high. And he's like, too high for a mighty dragon. And that's the thing. You're a mighty dragon. And um, there's no limits for you when it comes to what you could achieve in this lifetime and how you could evolve. But there's something so important here because I do... And like even my voice is getting shaky when I talk about this, there are definitely some deep, deep wounds around people being outright, for some of you, violent and abusive towards you just because of who you are. And that is a deep, deep wound that takes time to heal. And it's important that we're aware of those wounds because that is something where it's gonna be a trigger that is kind of hidden underneath the surface. And there's a lot of emphasis for you in this lifetime around developing your sense of self, but not losing your heart in the process. Because your most balanced and most aligned self is seeing all parts of you, the good and the bad. The, the parts of ourselves that you know we can use to help others and the parts of ourselves that we can use to hurt ourselves or harm others or hold ourselves back. There's a real Saturn energy here where I feel like you will reap what you sow in this lifetime. And one thing that you need to be aware of is that your impact on others as you ascend and as you grow into this energy again, this or for some of you, if you're not in this energy, it's, it's this self this self-confident energy, this self-esteem energy, which is beautiful because that's what the Empress is about. Like the Empress knows her worth. Like the Empress, you know, she doesn't chase, she attracts, she um, cultivates, she's patient, she flows with the cycles of the universe. And a lot of your, um, a lot of your success will come from the ability to flow with the cycles of the universe, but also have the confidence in yourself have the confidence in yourself to go after opportunities when they arise and to also know when, when the time to act is. I feel like there is a need to be aware of what desires you have because they're desires of your heart, they're desires of your soul, and what desires you have 
because your ego desires to prove itself and have itself validated. And I don't mean that in a way to like disparage you or tear you down, but you may have a hard time sometimes knowing what is a desire of the heart and what is a desire of the ego. And I think for you, because, you know, ego and the solar plexus chakra, like, they kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways because the ego has a lot to do with um, the mind and perceptions and anyway, um, for you, your sense of strength and your sense of self comes from who you are in your core. And not only that, the person that you're evolving to be because one of the coolest things about you is that I think that in your life, like your, your role is going to change, your job title is going to change, your passions are going to change, your everything for you is going to be shifting. And as you shift, your perception will as well. And it's quite possible that you might reach a point where you almost forget about, you know, past wounds or you forget the power that your voice has or you forget where you started. And I think there is a real danger here of if you cultivate this energy in a particularly egoic way, or let's just, I don't think you will cultivate this energy in a particular egoic way. But what I, what I could see happening is after a long period of success and things going really well for you, you might kind of forget that you're still a human learning on your journey. I honestly, I think that this is much further in the future for you. Um, when you're honestly, well, I guess that's, I guess it's dependent on where you're at in life. Um, but I think that if you are like middle-aged or older, it might be a lot harder to stay open-minded about information that you're receiving uh, because the sources might be coming from someone younger than you or you might forget, you know, that it's just easier to like think that we know everything when we've been doing something longer. But sometimes a beginner's mindset is actually really helpful. And so I think the priest in this case is, um, one, I think there's a need to not take yourself too seriously. And when you're in your main character energy, you won't take yourself too seriously. And that's important because when you take yourself too seriously and, and you worry about everything being perfect, you don't get a whole lot done. And not only that, it, it just, it restricts you, it restrains you, and it makes it hard to create. Like being, a, having a perfectionist mindset directly goes against em your empress energy. Because your empress energy understands that Things, things are perfect in their own imperfect way, if that makes sense. And things happen in the perfect time in the perfect way and flow in the perfect time in the perfect way. And perfect doesn't have to mean rigid or the same, you know? Like, for example, trees. Like, a lot of trees may be the same type, but none of them are necessarily the exact same. The leaf placement isn't the same, you know? The rate at which they grow isn't the same. The placement isn't the same. Like there's just, but it's still a perfect tree because it's a tree, you know? You're not criticizing one tree because it's got less branches or it's not as tall as the other tree. It's just a tree and it's growing and it's doing its job. It's perfect. It's perfectly fine. Like, and that's the thing. You're not, you, you have to stop looking at yourself as like an amalgamation of, you know, parts of yourself that you like and then parts of yourself that you wish you could detach from or, or parts of yourself that you need to fix. We can always improve and grow. And, and that's an important part of healing. And I think that that is going to be something that you prioritize and that's wonderful. But I think where you kind of trip yourself up is like, I think you create a lot of stress for yourself in the sense that you feel like you need to do more, or that you feel like it's not good enough. Or, I'm hearing that song from Hamilton that's like, she'll never be satisfied. And I think that um, in your case, Spirit's saying that your satisfaction is not going to come, come from a particular moment or a particular accomplishment. Your satisfaction is going to come from, is going to really start happening when you stop fighting life, when you embrace this energy of serenity. And I actually wanted to read it, read serenity for you because I think, I'll just read it. 
Serenity is the moment of stillness as you look deep into the eye of creation, which is really interesting because we have a lot of eyes around here, and rejoice. The reflection of all that exists shines within your eyes. Allow the stillness to envelop you, soften you, and uplift you. It is all expansive. It is illuminating. Allow the essence from deep inside to flow from within. Open yourself to the outpouring of energy as it pours from you and from all that you view. Allow it to flow over you and through you, enveloping all that exists into a gentle embrace of serenity. And, you know, I think that you are definitely meant to, like, the Empress just embodies serene energy, you know? She's just, like, vibing outside. Like, she's in that serenity, and she feels supported and nurtured and held by the universe. And I really think in your case, you know, you are meant to be light as air and solid as a rock all at once. And that might be, like, how am I supposed to do that? And what the answer is, is you're solid as a rock in certain areas and light as a feather in others. So for example, a place where you wanna be as solid as a rock when you're setting boundaries, you know? You don't wanna have people violating your boundaries. And a place where you wanna be light as air, for example, is when you're reflecting on yourself, when you're doing self-reflection or when you are, um, you know, doing spiritual work because you want to be in a more open mindset and a more objective mindset. So you can kind of step out of yourself, if that makes sense. And sometimes you'll integrate both together where you will have inspiration in the ether and ground it into reality. And what you ground into reality might bring you further inspiration into the ether and vice versa. I feel like with this mock card, what you need to know is, is that like, once again, what you get in, you will put out. But what you need to be aware of, and this is kind of just like a warning, is if you allow the wounds that hold you back to remain ignored and unaddressed, they might start expressing themselves at a very inconvenient point. And what I mean by that is you might really detach from these wounds or you might really kind of forget about them almost. And then something one day will really re-trigger them and trigger them hard. And you might be in a position at that point where your words and actions hold a lot more power and it might be more destructive if you're not careful. So there's a real need here to know that that with with great power comes great responsibility and and power is not something you're meant to be afraid of, but it is something that you're meant to be aware of and be responsible with because the feelings that you would be acting from and those feelings of being triggered come from a from a wounds around feeling rejected, feeling abandoned, feeling unworthy, unloved. And those are, you know, obviously like very low vibrational experiences and we all experience that we all have wounds around that and i think one thing that you want to remember is that you're not that person you're not that person like those were lies fed to you and not only that like there is nothing that there's nothing that you could do or nothing that anyone on this world could do that could prove that that you're a fraud or that you're not like when it comes to being yourself like there's the universe is working in your favor but it's also working in the favor of everyone because it loves everyone. You know, the universe is quite literally constantly trying to balance a world where all its human inhabitants are constantly seeking extremes. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I think what you need to know is, is that your best actions will come from a place of balance where your feminine and masculine energy are more balanced. I think that's really one thing that you're learning is how to embrace your masculine energy because it's your masculine energy that protects your feminine energy and helps you, you know, know when it's safe to express that energy or know when you need to set boundaries or to protect yourself from people or energies or environments that aren't conducive to you. But I also think that you're being encouraged to meditate more. You're being encouraged to really go within and daydream and and think about where you want to be i thought i let me take that back because that's part of the tarot portion but i'm i'm not done with this yet there's a couple more things i feel like what you need to know is is that for your life journey you have the per perfect purpose even if you don't know what that is yet and remember that life purpose is not the same thing as a career and our life purpose can change 
all the time and I think what you need to know is your main character energy like I think that you'll be the main character in a lot of different stories in the sense that um, your role may change, your title may change, things like that, but you know who you are. You know exactly who you are and you're unapologetic about that. You know, you're not out here trying to prove yourself or prove your worth. You just are. You know who you are and so you don't have to prove it to anyone else. Um, and I think as well, the more you make decisions from a place of balance where you're considering all sides, the more aligned outcomes will be for you. But I also think that, you know, your main character energy is really centered around you recognizing your inherent perfection with how you are. Also, um, being fair to yourself and others and recognizing when maybe, maybe you've been doing a disservice to yourself, for example, by like, I'll use me as an example. Like I, like many other kids, was really, was bullied really hard when I was growing up, but I bullied myself way harder than anyone else bullied me. So a lot, one of the biggest wounds that I had, or that I think I still, I still am healing with myself, if I'm being honest, is just being kinder to myself and recognizing, becoming aware of how much extra damage I may have created within myself because I refuse to be kind to myself because I, because I, because I, you know, was, you know, rewounding myself essentially. That's like what the three of swords is really about, you know, it, um, because it is the swords card. Like obviously they're all through a heart, but you know, it's when we keep thinking and can't, you know, keep stabbing ourselves with those same wounds. I think what you're meant to realize is that you know, you are a miracle. Like the fact that you exist, you're the sperm that won, dude. We're all like everyone here. We are the sperms that won. Like think about how many did not. They did not even finish. Like you are meant to. <laughs> That's funny. Um... <laughs> anyway, uh... you are so precious. Like the fact that you exist, the fact that we all exist, the fact that you're like even sitting sit I don't even know if you're sitting you might be doing something the fact that you exist and you're listening to me through time and space and have ears and have eyes and like just the fact that you exist is like an incredible thing and and the fact that you exist within a physical vessel and can do things like eat ice cream if you're not lactose intolerant and ride a bike if you've learned like which anyone can like I don't know just you're miraculous like humans like human creation is amazing a lot of the things that humans done is is amazing and we may not see it that way because it's regular to us but spirit does spirit sees how miraculous you are spirit sees how amazing you are and I feel like what you're meant to understand is, is that you're not just your physicality, but you're also not just your essence. You're everything together and you're the best version of yourself will be the one where you don't take no crap from anyone else. You know your worth, you know your boundaries, and you don't settle for things that that take you away from your peace and things that don't feel right and aligned with you. Like this is a lot about just being empowered enough to know what's right for you and what's not and to not let any negativity or adversity stop you from embracing who you are so let's go ahead now and look at how you can ground your main character energy into this 3d reality so we have the tower which is oh my god because i was just talking about rapunzel yeah you better watch rapunzel i'm gonna be mad at you if you don't we we also have justice again we have the queen of swords we have the Wheel of Fortune, and we have the Seven of Cups. Okay. First thing I have to say with the Seven of Cups is just because you can't see something or you haven't experienced something doesn't mean it doesn't exist or it's not true. I also feel like one thing that you may need to know is, and it's interesting because it kind of came up in the last pile, your sense of self shouldn't be tied to like an aesthetic or something like that. Your sense of self should be tied to your soul and your essence and your aesthetic can change all the time. 
I feel like with the seven of cups, you may have a hard time knowing what decisions to make or knowing what to do. And maybe that's because you're excited by a lot of things or maybe you're afraid of taking action or maybe, maybe you're just confused because you don't know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, that's your main character energy, at least right now. Because what I was saying earlier is you know you're in your you're in your main character energy most when you are boldly embodying whoever it is you are in that moment and obviously whoever it is you are in that moment if you're in like a deeply shadow energy like if you're really upset you know that's a moment where it's important to kind of take a step back and be like whoa i don't want to take any action here that i might regret but also you know when you are embodying you know lighter aspects of yourself recognizing that you know, nobody deserves to shit on or take away any aspect of that light because that's you and that's your essence and they can go find their own. They don't need to deal with you. But I think with the tower card being here, I think that this is really significant. And honestly, it may be that the universe creates this creates moments for you where it kind of forces you to embrace yourself but I also think with the tower you know this is an interesting one because she's still in the tower you know it's it's not broken it hasn't come crashing down and you know it's the tower obviously represents things like foundations and well it can represent a lot of things it's a major arcana card and you actually have three major arcanas with justice and the wheel of fortune as well but I think with the tower card here Spirit is asking you to, to pay attention to what is in your present reality that doesn't align with who you are anymore and that you know will not align with the person that you're becoming. What routines, what objects, what what type of media, even, even down to the type of media that you consume. Like you might find that that media that you once enjoyed, you just no longer align with anymore. So like Spirit is really asking you to to not be complacent about changing things, to not be complacent about taking action towards, not be complacent about getting rid of what's not working for you. Because I think that you are meant to strive for balance and, try, and you're meant to try to find the most balanced version of yourself possible. Like you're meant to not only reintegrate and explore your feminine energy more, but to also understand how you can utilize your masculine energy to, um, protect your feminine energy and how you can use your feminine energy to nurture your masculine energy, if that makes sense. But I also think that this just talks about, you know, being fair to yourself in the sense that, you know, like, for example, if you beat yourself up a lot, you know, if you say things like, I am disgusting, that's being unfair to yourself. That's being super unfair to yourself. We're all disgusting but we're all miracles too. Like I, and I honestly, I just only think humans are gross because like, I don't know, I just think body stuff is like really gross, like medical stuff freaks me out. But you're not a disgusting person. Like, and one thing that you wanna be aware of is that, in, you know, having that viewpoint of like, oh, I am the worst and then shifting to, I'm literally better than everyone, fuck all of you. Like that's not a good state to be in either like being objective and realistic and balanced about yourself like that that's kind of the the line you want to ride but i i also think that with this justice card being here spirit's really asking you to trust that there is a reason why things are unfolding the way they are and that when you follow what you're being drawn towards you will naturally feel like things will flow easier you'll feel more aligned and you'll you'll feel like the universe is on your side and even if things don't go your way in the moment you'll you'll see when they turn out like over time that's an excellent example of where you don't want to get upset for example well i mean you can any reaction any is valid i'm not trying to invalidate you um i'm just saying here where you might feel like if you're waiting for change to happen, spirit saying you're the change you're waiting for, start now. Um, because some of the change coming, it requires you to start taking action in the present in order to be 
ready for it in that time but you don't even need to be worried about that because it's divine timing so really the point of what i'm trying to say is is that you need to be aware of what you are being complacent about and not um eliminating because maybe you're afraid or maybe you just keep putting it off or maybe you just i think spirit's saying if you want true change if you want a true shift you have to get out of the foggy energy and start clearing away what's not working especially like if you have a particularly like cluttered environment or something like that you know seeing what doesn't really serve you anymore and what you don't need could even just help help you think more clearly and, and get rid of some of the confusion but i also think that um you know spirit is, is really just asking you to treat yourself the way you treat others um and and be kinder to yourself but also to be unapologetic about your truth i feel like you're almost being given permission from the divine to be a bit I wouldn't say shady, but to be unapologetic about your truth. Like, a perfect example of Queen of Swords energy, or King of Swords, or Queen of Swords, it doesn't really matter. Um, Willem from the Drag Queen Willem. Because he just always speaks his mind. Like, and he does not care. And he's obviously made some enemies or I, I don't know I don't know his life I don't know if he has enemies but like he doesn't give a fuck about like like what people think of him like he's gonna tell people that like he'll speak out about things that he sees are wrong like he speaks out about injustice for example that's a huge thing like he speaks out about injustice and like that's obviously the people that that cause the injustice obviously are not gonna like that have that truth being spoken but it's almost like you're kind of meant to embody that energy a little bit where um, you're unapologetic about, about your truth. Like you're unapologetic about the things that you believe in and the things that you think are fucked up. Like say what you will, but like he he's tr true to himself. He tells it like it is. He doesn't lie just to appease people or in order to stay in someone's good graces. And I think that's part of what you're meant to do as well because it could be that it's so easy for you to kind of mesh and and mold with the people that you get close to like for example if you are a serial monogamist or um, if you really desire relationships like you might not be getting a relationship right now because spirit's saying you don't have healthy enough boundaries to sustain a healthy connection with someone or something like that i'm not sure what they're saying like this is just an example but the point of this is you need to be unapologetic about the changes that you need to make and unapologetic about being honest with yourself about what you're not what you could be doing that you're not um in order to get these changes moving but i also think that in terms of setting boundaries this skill will be really helpful for you because if you feel guilty for setting boundaries it's just once again creating more stress but people who make you feel guilty for setting boundaries are the exact reason why boundaries are needed. And I think what you need to know is, is that you don't need to be super apologetic or super kind to every single person you meet, especially if they're like rude to you. I mean, I'm obviously saying I'm not like, don't be rude to people, but you don't have to, you don't have to be something that you're not in order to get praise or something like that. But I think with the queen of swords, like you're really just being asked to speak your truth more and speak up for yourself especially and not be afraid to even uh tell people the cold hard truth i mean you can still tell it to them in, a, in kind ways but i also think the cold hard truth needs to be towards yourself as well so i would pay attention to what you might be distracting yourself from because you don't want to admit some certain truth to yourself but i think with this queen of swords energy once you realize like you were never perfect to begin with and the idea that you needed to be perfect was a delusion um created from your ego then you you'll realize like oh i was a bad bitch all along why was i stressing myself out so much and so with this wheel of fortune as well i feel like spirit is really just asking you to keep going you know this this process of becoming yourself and, and being in your main character energy like i said it, it's going to be something that happens in the moment and your main character energy is going to shift all the time there are going to be days where you feel, feel super masculine there are going to be days where you feel super feminine there are going to be days where you feel a little bit of both like doesn't really matter what you're feeling it's just as long as you honor what you're feeling and 
not beat yourself up for whatever it is that like you're feeling or going through at that time. But I feel like what you need to know is, is that things that haven't been revealed to you will be revealed to you in time. The best thing that you can do for yourself is trust that the universe is doing, you know, the work on their end and ask yourself how you can play your part or how you can play your role. And if you're doing everything and your power to be your most aligned self and your most the most embodied version of yourself then then you're doing all you need to do but if you're saying okay you know i could be doing this or i could be doing that pay attention to what action you could be taking to um get your yourself a little bit closer you might you might struggle to make these changes because you're looking at things in a very um you're looking at the outcome rather than the process of creation. And the Empress is all about creation. The Empress is patient, you know? The Empress doesn't plant a seed and then wake up the next morning and be like, ah, what, the, what the fuck? Like, I just planted you yesterday. Like, why are you not a flower yet? You know, obviously, if you plant a seed, it's going to take time to grow. But also, you know, while it's on the plant to grow, you may still have to do things to tend to it, like water it, weed, I don't know, other garden shit. I don't know much about gardening. But the point being that you are, you're kind of like a garden that is being tended to, that is growing and dying all at once. You know what I mean? Like there are certain plants that grow better in certain environments and certain plants that don't and certain seasons, whatever. And the point that I'm trying to make is, is that you are so multidimensional that you cannot put yourself in one narrative or one identity. Like you need to give yourself the room and the freedom to explore who you are and express that at your own comfort, but recognize that you don't need someone else's approval to make that exploration valid, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead now and get you some tea leaf oracle cards. I just kind of wanted to see what would come through here if there was like any advice, anything you should be aware of. But to start, we have the star guaranteed success, which I love. And I'm so glad I didn't mention, I'm, I'm not glad, I'm mad I didn't mention this earlier because I was paying attention to this star here. And in that Barbie movie, there's this, which I'm telling you, if you don't watch it, you're missing out there's that's where you start exploring okay anyway um th there's a line in the movie that's a song and it says constant as the stars above always know that you are loved and i feel like this is the universe's way of saying how much they love you and that they want you to be yourself they don't want you to to be something that you're not like your success is going to come from embodying the star that you are embodying your truth and embodying your differences and your and your quirks, like it, 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 who you are that is going to guarantee your success. We also have Bo, you are highly thought of. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, like pe the people around you think of you so much more highly than you think of yourself. And in fact, this is why it's so important for you to be very cautious about reacting from a place of anger or um fear or anxiety toward the situation that triggers you because while you're being triggered by experiences of your past the people that maybe necessarily trigger you don't ne don't see you in that light and will likely look up to you and think of you highly and so a moment of defensiveness could like crush the soul of someone that that thinks really highly of you and I feel like you would never want to do that and I, I I just almost feel like that's coming up as a warning like you know it's so important that you get on the trolley with how awesome you are because if you don't you will underestimate the power of your words and your actions towards people that do look up to you highly and you may have no idea that they look up to you that highly but it would probably crush you if you knew that that had happened. So I feel like the spirit's saying that's why your inner work and your sense of self is so important because you play a powerful role. And like when a fire breathes dragon, when a, when a fire breathes a dragon, when a dragon breathes fire, uh, it can be very destructive. But we also have fly, 
period of ill health and depression i feel like with that um you know these are obviously difficult experiences that we have and i think one thing that you need to know is is that like you can't you can't be so hard on yourself for things like that like when we have limitations when we have times down or rest times like or you know we're ill the only thing we need during those times are rest so if you're if you're trying first of all if you are dealing with some sort of ill health right now or mental health issues one thing that you need to know is is that you are in tons of need of rest and care and nurturing you do not need to be pushing yourself further you do not need to be wearing yourself out stressing yourself out or being hard on yourself because of um because of what you're dealing with or experiencing you know i feel like what you need to know is that the best thing that you can do for yourself is surrender to the cycles that you're in and not beat yourself up further for things outside of your control but um you know depression as someone who deals with that uh i can say like you know when you enter those depressive states for example if that's something that you deal with you know that's an excellent example of where you want to be more balanced with your approach you know so recognizing okay i am not in a great place right now and that's something where where you have to queen of sorts yourself because you might be in denial about it and be like no i'm fine i'm fine i can push through this and that's when you want to be like no stop listen we're not doing well right now we need to be honest with ourselves we need more time for care we need more time to rest like and and asking yourself what is feasible can you ask someone for help who can help you because these are things too like you cannot expect yourself to work through energies like this completely by yourself usually there is a need to ask for help in some sort of way and to be unapologetic about that as well um you deserve proper rest and care and it is unfair to yourself to expect yourself to heal at a quicker rate than is necessary like be kind to yourself i guess that's the point of what i'm saying but we also have bell with announcements so there could be some some kind of important announcement but we also have march so um pisces or aries energy could be significant um but or the month of march could be significant uh this is a timeless reading but march in some way could have a uh why am i hearing march of the penguins i don't know but those are your tea leaf cards so let's go ahead and finish off now with some advice for you so oh, i was like why is there a missing card it's because there was a missing card to start we have a crystal for you and yours is topaz topaz is the world's hardest silicon silicone silicon i don't know base material its name alludes to the sanskrit word for fire in the middle ages it was believed to cure crazy who needs it? Anyone burning the midnight oil, the candle at both ends, bridges, or all the above? Where to put it wherever the action needs to happen, and when to use it when you're aiming in the right direction but keep misfiring. Passion is totally indispensable, but if you're not careful with it, it might burn you up. Call on Topaz to transform wild obsessions into laser-like fo focus and burning desires into getting things done. Increase your firepower. We all... <laughs> Okay, we also have fire, transformation, rebirth, renewal. And I think that's the thing. You are going to go through many transformations, but you're always going to be reborn into a more powerful and more aligned version of yourself than you were before. You know, fire can be destructive, but it makes room for new growth to happen. And I think in your case, don't, don't fight the fire. Let it happen. Uh, but we also have surrender the idea you can fix someone it's time for a relationship to shift it doesn't work to try to fix someone each person must be accountable for his or her own healing and we also have surrender defensiveness defensiveness is a sign of weakness to communicate in a more empowered way stay centered and hear someone out then offer a clear non-defensive response which that's real queen of swords energy we also have lalita tripura ugh, lalita tripura sundari which i'm definitely not saying correctly but we're going to read her card in a second 
But finally, we have soak. Draw a warm bath with Epsom salts and your favorite oils. If a bath isn't possible, create a lovely foot soak. So that's one way to self-care. But I want to go ahead and read this from the Oracle Deck Guidebook because it just words things better than I could. Also, apologies for my American accent. I'm just going to call her Lolita. She is the goddess of erotic spirituality. Move toward that which makes you feel sensual, awake, and alive. In our society, we've been taught to suppress, to repress our divine feminine nature in order to be taken seriously. Oh my god. However, by doing so, we are only operating as half of a whole. Lalita has come to remind you of your inner tantrika energy, that which oozes with erotic shakti life force. It's time to merge your spiritual self with your sexual self, as the two are intrinsically related. Enjoy all things with sensuality, food, conversation, self-care movement. Follow what feels good, not what makes sense to a patriarchal system. In all aspects of yourself, Bring all aspects of yourself to the table and watch your life blossom. Well, thank you, Lolita, because that was exactly uh, what I was trying to say, but she said it in a much more concise way. But uh, pile two, I think that is where I'm going to leave this reading. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and for watching my ads or just letting them play in the background. That's the simplest and easiest way to support me. But if you'd like to support me and my channel and show appreciation for what I do, you can like this video. You can comment down below. Let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new read. You can also check out my merch, which is linked below and my social media, though do be aware of tons of scammers that pretend to be me. So just know I don't offer personal readings and I will not offer, um, I will not offer you a personal reading in your dms if someone does that claiming to be me they're a liar um but that's all i have for you guys so thank you so much for watching and for being here i really hope that this reading helped i hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and i hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye hi there pile three welcome to your re oh shit am i recording yeah i am okay do that over again <laughs> okay <clears throat> Hi there, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Labradorite Dragon and this stack of tarot cards, this is going to be your reading on your main character energy. So we're going to use the tarot cards in a little bit to look at how you can ground your main character energy and what you can do to embody it more. But we're going to start by looking at what your main character energy actually looks like and in its fullest form. So I do want to say not everything may resonate, especially because you may be in the process of growing into this person or this main character energy. So just know that the way to know that it doesn't resonate is if it doesn't sound like you at all, even now, and it doesn't seem plausible or it's not even desirable to grow into the person that I'm describing, if that makes sense. For those of you where you're hearing what I'm describing and it sounds like you, but you're doubting it and thinking like, oh no, I couldn't do that. That's your ego and that's a sign that the reading is resonating. You're just denying that to yourself because you're questioning it. And anyway, let's get into it now. So to start, we have the Hermit. We have the Great Serpent. We have roman chamomile with the theme being destiny the trigger statement is i am lost and the true statement is i do what i love there is a path waiting just for you open your heart and mind so you can use it on your journey of fulfillment we also have mediator with the light attribute gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life respect for both sides of an argument we also have the gold spectrum, as well as Pele. Then we also have Mars. We have the buffalo. We have the shadow attribute of the fool, which is 
using humor to wound rather than to liberate denial of your emotional truth. We have no strings attached. And finally, we have Prometheus. So let me just fix these a little bit. I'm honestly really blown away by this energy. I'm not going to lie. Um, this is really awesome. You're really, I guess you're really awesome, Pio 3. Or you're meant to be really awesome. So if you're saying right now, no, no, I'm not awesome. You're lying to yourself. And I'm mocking you for calling yourself not awesome because you're so wrong about it. I actually, this is the pile where I feel safe to mock you. If you don't think that you're the shit because like, oh my God, you're the shit. It's at your fundamentally playing yourself if you think you're anything less than great it actually is making me physically angry right now and you might feel angry when people like give you compliments and things like that and you have no idea how angry the universe is at you for not even seeing how great you are so i hope you can see how great you are during this reading because i'm I don't even know you and I'm tired of you not thinking you're great. So like I'm actually angry, like I'm angry right now, which makes sense because let's talk about your energy. There is a lot of Aries energy here, um, but a lot of fire energy, period, especially with Pele being here. Um, she is a Hawaiian goddess and I believe she resides in a volcano on the big island. Any Hawaiians want to confirm that or elaborate on that for me? That would be really awesome. But uh, she is known for creating new land purely through passion and fire because she's a volcano. So that is a large portion of what you're meant to do. But your main character energy cannot truly be embodied until you're able to look at life without any limiting beliefs and to truly step into your power because let me just start with this hermit card because that's kind of where i've been starting with all the piles so i've been using this card to kind of represent your inner child and i can definitely see with the hermit card being here that you've always had a really rich imagination and likely were more introverted growing up um it's quite possible that maybe you had no problem playing by yourself or kind of going off into your own little world this is also virgo energy so you could have been uh you know a child that really liked to organize their toys by like color or um help your loved ones around the house i feel like you were always a very helpful and generous child but i also think you're a little more reserved it, it kind of it kind of seems like you honestly have a really good balance of feminine and masculine energy within you and I think you always have it's like you've you've always been able to honor and embody whatever energy naturally came to you so like for example there's a lot of interesting energy here between feminine like the two main energies here are earth and fire earth is a feminine energy and fire is a masculine energy and the cool thing about the great serpent is it literally uh it engulfs all opposites so you're a very multi-dimensional person and that's a hard thing to be in a world where we constantly need to be labeling things and understanding what things are and saying things are this way or they're that way you know we we have as humans very limiting beliefs and very det deterministic like perspectives of things and I definitely think that you struggled with that growing up it's almost like you had no absolutely when you were younger no problem being yourself especially if you were alone it might be you might not be yourself if you're on strangers and shy but I feel like you almost liked being alone because then you could just be whoever you wanted to be like you know especially if you were a child that really loved like make make believe and things like that like you know you could be you could make believe as the dragon one time and then be the hero in another and then the princess and you know it's just like you really have a powerful spirit and one of the beautiful things that i that i notice with this boat here is it's almost like you are meant to sail your own journey to go your own way to forge your own path and it even is shown here in this destiny card and so it's quite likely that 
kind of one of your hero arcs before you kind of step into your main character energy is going to be realizing and understanding that you are very powerful and that you need to stop disempowering yourself and you need to stop bullying yourself because the people of your past did that. It's almost like one thing that I think that you may have trouble realizing is how much you exacerbate your own wounds by treating yourself the same way the people that treated you poorly treated you if that makes sense and so i think that's something that you're gonna realize is like something that you're not gonna take anymore like i'm hearing that song like we're not gonna take it anymore so i feel like you're you're kind of there's gonna be a moment at a point in your life where some of you i feel like you've already reached it and others i think you're on the journey there to realizing it but all of you you're meant to realize at a certain point that your wounds around your sense of self and self-esteem have nothing to do with you and everything to do with the fact that you were just born into a world that could not that could not nurture all of your multi-dimensional qualities and also we just don't have the freedom or as much freedom as we would like to to be our multi-dimensional selves so i think that and even that like with freedom to to do that and be that a lot of us don't even realize we're multi-dimensional a lot of us cultivate personalities that make us feel safe and then believe those are our personalities forever in fact a lot of the more powerful aspects of you may have actually been suppressed or shamed depending on uh, the type of family you were raised in um and what uh gender roles were placed upon you but with this destiny card here, with the trigger statement being I am lost and the true statement being I do what I love, there is a path waiting for you. Open your heart and mind so you can use it on your journey to fulfillment. You are meant to... So here's the thing. You have a really brilliant mind and a very powerful heart with a lot of passion and a lot of drive. And you're meant to use both of those together. And one of the biggest things that is a problem and at least I would say like, I don't know, I just a problem I notice in us humans is that we have a really hard time honoring emotions as data the way we honor facts and logic and numbers as data emotional data is still data even if it's even if it can't be quantified in the same way uh but anyway i think for you the only time you'll truly suffer is when you're living a life not in alignment with what you want you're meant to take the lead in your own life like you have your own path waiting for you with the great serpent spirit is carrying you the whole way through this lifetime because this lifetime for you is a lot about transformation and regeneration for your greatest good and we have to talk about all this the storm energy here because i definitely think that you know, especially when you're younger, you're going to have some more difficult experiences, maybe some more difficult tower moments. Um, but those are all experiences that are leading you to help you see what is truly valuable and grow into who you are. Like this great serpent even talks about in the card, it says just when you think things are, are finally straightening, straightening out and you're feeling at peace, the great serpent changes direction again and that's kind of the thing you're not the one meant to control the boat spirits controlling the boat and and i think that you knew that at an early age but obviously um our spiritual wisdom as a collective society is <laughs> abysmal so um for you you know life must have gotten very confusing as you started to develop your brain and you realize your natural instincts and what you intuitively feel is not matching what you're being told to do, what you're being told you need to do. And, but obviously the people telling you those things didn't realize you have this invisible boat carrying you exactly where you need to go. But I think what most people don't realize is that a lot of us have invisible boats carrying us exactly where we need to go. We just don't listen to them and it's called our intuition. So for you, I think that you have had a very deep connection to your inner self and I think that at times maybe those more introverted parts of yourself were were cultivated and the or were supported or cultivated in your environment and the more impassioned, powerful Mars Pele energy that's like explosive and passionate, you know, that might have been suppressed or shamed within you because for whatever reason. Um 
or maybe vice versa. Maybe for some of you, your introverted nature wasn't honored and only your powerful nature was honored. So it, what, what you're meant to realize is that you are many different extremes rolled into one. Like you have this powerful, passionate energy, but you also can be very grounded and very practical. But it, I think for you, when you're truly standing in your main character energy, it is like these... For, I'm kind of blown away at how similar these colors are. Um, I almost kind of see this as like the true colors of your aura. But with this no strings attached and buffalo, this and the Ouroboros, this is about having literally unlimited possibilities and being able to work with the divine. You know, the buffalo is all about spiritual and physical strength, material strength. Being able to, it's, it's like a, it's a, a an energy that's grounded yet spiritual. So, um, you know, this is someone who is connected to the divine through their heart and mind, but they understand the laws of the physical world and understand that they need to do their part and that they need to be the one to physically manifest what the divine is trying to create through them. You're meant to co-create with the divine and Part of co-creation with the divine, what really gets in the way is our limiting beliefs. So, you know, for example, if you wanted to move forward on a, a new path in life, but you're like, oh, I can't do that because I've never done, I, I've never, I've never been down that path before. And I don't know, it, it might not be right for me. It's almost like what you're meant to learn is that the strings attached to you that hold you back are mainly fear, but you're meant to embody someone who is not afraid to go after what they want and be bold. You're not meant to be attached to, well, I guess here's the thing. Even if you tried to attach yourself to things like a certain place, a certain person, people, and let me, let me just say like your person. So obviously you will have attachments to people. You will have attachments to things. But you're only out of alignment when there's a refusal to release something when it no longer serves you. So with no strings attached, part of your main character energy is, is dependent on your ability to be open and not necessarily vulnerable. I guess vulnerable when you're in a state that you know you can... When you... When you okay point of what I'm trying to say is it's also getting dark. Can you guys still even see? Okay, perfect. Uh, it's been storming on and off. And I, I almost feel like that's symbolic for you guys. Like you have a lot of emotional intensity. And I think that you might fear that emotional intensity, especially when it comes to like attachments with people or, you know, relationships or friendships, because I can definitely see that you're a very self-sacrificing person like you want to help others and you care about others deeply in fact i think one of the things that one of the best gifts that you have with this gold spectrum card being here is the fact that you can see the value in things that others can't like you know you know the saying all that glitters isn't gold you're recognizing what is truly valuable and your and your main character energy will see that as well your when you're in your main character energy you will see through the illusions of the ego that that the illusions of the things that glitter that aren't actually gold if that makes sense i think that one thing with your main character energy as well is that there's a sense of surrender there where life is going to have you go through these cycles and sometimes you might not understand things and sometimes you might feel lost or you might feel discouraged but it's all meant to redirect you where you're meant, where you're meant to go next there's this real balancing game going on here with you and your main character energy where you're meant to not only balance things with your outside world and your internal world but also balancing things between the spiritual and the physical and you're, you're kind of being the magician in this lifetime in in certain ways but kind of not really the magician because you also need you're also embracing like the high priestess and the empress and the emperor all in one it's like 
the two etheric feminine and masculine energies and the two earthly feminine and masculine energies it's like you're meant to understand all of them and integrate all of them together in fact i almost feel like this lifetime for you might be kind of one of your last lifetimes like this i don't even know what that means but i almost feel like you may have chosen to do things the hard way but not the hard way if that makes sense it's not it, it seems like it's the hard way but it's actually the expedited way like i think you chose to take on more lessons this lifetime it's it's like choosing to take a um a larger course load for a semester so that you can get more credits out of the way you know what i mean it, it's kind of like you chose to take on take on as much soul growth in this lifetime as you possibly could. Um, and don't get mad at me for that. You chose that, not me. But I also kind of did too, so it's okay. <laughs> You're not alone. Um, but anyway, I definitely think that because you are so, f you have really high standards for yourself and that's wonderful. I mean, that's definitely shown here in this main character energy. Like you are meant to be someone that is, stands out, that's a leader. I mean, look at all this lightning that we have here. You're meant to strike fear in the hearts of some people. And I don't know how you're gonna do that, but I think it's just with your power. And I think that you're actually, part of your purpose too is to trigger others into finding their destiny, into finding their path. And you might find that you get the negative brunt of that where, people don't realize that they're projecting their shadows onto you and they might find that they're really triggered by you because they see something in you that they see in themselves and they they haven't tapped into it the way that you have. And so rather than realizing that, that they have the ability to tap into that, until they realize that at least, they may project that negatively onto you. But I also think with this fool card here, kind of your biggest like Achilles heel in general is your inability to allow yourself to feel emotions. Um, you might take yourself too seriously sometimes. And when you feel this way, like using humor to wound rather than to liberate denial of your emotional truth, like you might make really self-deprecating jokes about yourself or you may not let yourself feel things. And that's really only gonna hold you back because here's the thing, you have a lot of power and obviously with great power comes great responsibility. And you're only going to get more powerful as you step into your purpose. Um, as you step into your purpose, you're going to get more resources and more support for what you're doing. And I think the reason why the universe is supporting you in this is not only because you have good intentions, but you have a good heart and you could also use the power and the blessings that you receive from following your own path to be a representative for voices like yours that don't have one and also to give back and do good with the resources that you have like obviously there are lots of like power doesn't there there's a what's that quote that's like power doesn't change you it only reveals you and i think for you 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 are always meant to have a big journey and always meant to wield a lot of power because the universe trusts you with it. And I think the biggest thing that you need to remember here is that it is so important to stay aligned in your truth because when you fall out of alignment with your truth and you wield a lot of power and you have a lot of Aries energy here or just fire energy. So you can be especially destructive if you're triggered or you're upset. Like if you strike the wrong person, you know, or you strike at the wrong time or strike at, at someone or something that triggers you that may not have necessarily deserved it in the moment, you know, you might end up regretting it or you might end up having to deal with some negative repercussions that could have been avoided if you had, um, you know, taking a step back and regulated yourself before you reacted, if that makes sense. I think one of the biggest things that you're learning to, one of the biggest skills you're learning is how to be less reactive, but also still allow yourself to feel emotions. Like, for example, Virgo energy, if you have any Virgo energy, 
challenging. I have a Virgo moon. If you have a Virgo moon, oh my God, I'm praying for you because it's not easy. Um, you know, that's an excellent example of a moon that doesn't necessarily feel their feelings. It detaches from their feelings and analyzes their feelings from afar. So you don't need to be a Virgo moon to do that. But if you do that, one thing that you need to understand is, is that your emotions are not fodder for you to analyze at a distance. Your emotions are yours. You can't keep distancing yourself from them because your emotions still exist even if you intellectualize them outside of your own being. They're still there. You're just pushing them away. And oftentimes it's when we do that that something seemingly small can trigger us to have a reaction that is disproportionate to the action because we've been suppressing things for so long. You you become a ticking time bomb almost, if that makes sense. So for you, it's really important to not, to recognize that even your feelings are something that you're not attached to. Your feelings are just an experience. It's just data. It's telling you something. And I think what you're meant to realize is you're not meant to be afraid of these changes. You're not meant to be afraid of the fact that you're not necessarily in control of your life or your destiny. That's actually something that you should find very comforting because you're, you're being guided by spirit. And in fact, you're being guided by passion and purpose to not only help others but to help yourself as well like your main character energy is about being a leader is about bringing down these spiritual truths that you have access to and that you already understand and that you will continue to learn and and make these truths more accessible for people who don't have the same capabilities or people who you know are could learn from you people who could be awakened from you in some sort of way like whatever your purpose is I mean a lot of your purpose is just to live your life and to follow the journey and and see the wisdom that is gained from it I definitely think you'll have some sort of kundalini awakening um kundalini energy seems significant um and I also think that you will be a really good fair honorable leader I think that no matter what you're meant to do, you're meant to be a leader, whether it's like a boss or um, whether you're meant to start your own company or whether you're meant to, and, and let me even say that, career and purpose are not the same thing. Like, <laughs> not the same thing at all. And a lot of times there are many people whose purpose has nothing to do with their career. So just know that like career and purpose don't need to be hand in hand. But for you, your your main character energy will be best embodied when you honor your creative drive and your passions because your passions are a part of your purpose and i think that you're almost meant to forge a path that doesn't exist yet and by forging this path you will make it easier for people that are meant to walk a path similar to yours you're like a pioneer essentially so it's like you know, if you were on one side of the United States and you had to drive to the other, like if you're on the East Coast, and you had to drive to the West Coast. Yeah, it would take you probably like over a day, but you could do it and it wouldn't be too horrible. But if that was, you know, 300, what, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. Um, wait, no, I'm my not. It's like, damn, I really... <laughs> <laughs> that history minor uh, is not doing me very well right now. Uh, a while ago. If you were a pioneer, all right, it was going to take you a hell of a lot longer. Like, what, months? Definitely not everyone is going to make it. You might just randomly get bitten by a snake or get cholera halfway there and just be done for. So the point is, is that you've got it a lot more difficult than the people that will come after you because you're the one forging, forging the path. You're the one forging the way there. And like a pioneer, no matter what that is, because, you know, pioneers don't just have to be. The only reason I use that example as pioneers is because I'm obviously American. And that's just like, that's just when we talk about pioneers. It's, those are the pioneers we talk about. So, but being a pioneer is an archetype, you know, it's someone doing something that hasn't been done before. And for you, you're doing something that hasn't been done before. You're bringing in polarities that haven't been combined yet. You're literally alchemized. Like you're kind of meant to be an alchemist and bless the world with whatever your creations are. For some of you, those creations might even just be children. Like you might bless the world with some sick ass kids or something. Like, and I meant sick isn't cool. Um, 
just to clarify. Um, but with that Prometheus as well, I, I, I just, I really think that, you know, you're kind of meant to be a torchbearer where you show the way and show, show others how it's meant to be done. Like, especially if you are someone who looked at the leaders in your life growing up and were just like, wow, these people are trash. Like they suck at being leaders. Like you're meant to be the leader that you didn't have. Like you're meant to be that, like that inspirational person that other people can look up to. In fact, I think that your, your most powerful life experiences, like your most powerful roles won't be until you're, um, getting up there, if that makes sense. So if you're already doing a lot, just know you've got a lot more and that's not something you should dread. It's something you should be excited for. It was what you're meant, meant to do. And I think one of the coolest things about your energy pile three is that you've got a lot of fight in you. And what the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is to ask yourself, what is a battle worth fighting and what isn't? Don't fight yourself. Don't fight your natural um, inclinations unless it's something like, for example, reactivity that could be destructive. You know, that's where you might want to like work on that. But, you know, when it comes to fighting for what you believe in, that's a fight worth fighting. When it, But when it comes to fighting someone in a Facebook comment section, that's probably not. It's probably not the greatest use of your time. You can still do it and get yourself all worked up. But I think what you need to remember is that you only have so much of this powerful, purposeful energy, like fires do go out. So recognizing where that fire is best utilized so that you don't run out of it prematurely when you need it. And then also knowing when it's time to go within, rest and reflect so that you can almost recharge to then take more action. It's kind of this cyclical thing. And then at the same time, you're also dealing with the universe kind of playing their hand as well and keeping you in alignment with your path, which is gonna be a bit of a mind fuck for you because, you know, obviously we have egos and we like to think that we are in control of where we're going and where we're heading, but we're really not. And, you know, you're gonna wanna know what's going on and you might blame yourself and you might almost fight yourself and think you're doing something wrong and you're not. It's just, it's just how things are unfolding. And so for you, you're kind of meant to be, your main character energy is that of a spiritual warrior who is, you know, fighting for their own truth, fighting for their own transcendence, their own ascension, and, and also fighting for a better environment for all beings that live here. And I, I don't just mean environment in terms of like the literal physical environment, but I mean like, you know, our society, like just changing things for the better. Like you're meant to change things in ways that you feel passionate about. And essentially it doesn't matter if your purpose changes 70 times. Like if your purpose needs to change 70 times, then it will. Like that's kind of, what the divine and the universe are trying to get you to understand is, is that it's okay to start without knowing exactly where you're going, but just taking the first steps. Because a lot of the, the most valuable, the most valuable things that you're going to take from this lifetime are not the, the most valuable things from this lifetime are not going to be the things you earn. It's going to be, you know, the, the experiences that you have and, and the, the bonds that you share with people and, and the memories that you make. And, I think the earlier you can be aware of what's false light and what's true light, it will help you know which direction is truly meant for you. Like for example, like false light, for example, would be technology, um, which technology can be used for good, but there's a lot of what, but we often use technology as a way to escape or as a way to, um, as, as a source of entertainment, which it is, but it can also be like more of a something that distracts us and stops us from, you know, doing the inner work that we need to in order to kind of just like avoid that uncomfortableness. You know what I mean? Um, but I think, I think, I think I'm going to wrap it up there and get into the tarot cards. Are we good spirit? 
And we're she's okay, we're good. All right. So moral of the story, your main character energy is someone who goes with the flow of life and doesn't fight it, but at the same time still fights for like you're meant to be your own best protector. I mean, like the universe is protecting you, but you're also meant to stand up for yourself. You're also meant to enforce your boundaries. You're also meant to also not fight like things like your emotions. You're meant to embrace your emotions so that you can understand them more so that you can learn from them. There's a lot about just knowing what is worth fighting for and knowing what is going to be a waste of energy staying true to who you are and remembering why you started something or what the point of something was in the first place like with your purpose for example like say you do something and you start getting very successful off of it for example and you might find that that excitement of success you know obviously egos love that that ish and you might find that your um, your des like your desires kind of shift, and and you might just lose touch with the original reason why you started something, or the original reason why you were trying to accomplish something. So, for you, it's very important that you never lose touch of that internal connection with yourself, because. If you lose that internal connection with yourself, it will be a lot easier for you to kind of fall off the rails a little bit and make mistakes that you wouldn't have made if you were staying present with yourself and, and you know, not neglecting your inner world or not neglecting your needs or what really needs to happen. You know, one, one thing for you as well is that you're never meant to sacrifice your needs in the pursuit of success. Like spirit is trying to get you to a point where you can really feed yourself and nourish yourself because you're meant to feed and nourish others with what you have left over and so the more you can get into that energy of balance and self-care and almost like taking the lead in your own self-love journey and your own like Taking the lead in your own main character energy, essentially, and embracing this main character identity for yourself that I think you've kind of already known that you have. I mean, we're all technically main characters, but you know what I mean. Um, I just think that you're meant to be a force to be reckoned with because even though you are so powerful, you do have the ability to come off as balanced and fair and really make yourself heard in powerful but gentle ways so I think what you're meant to know is is that nothing in your life is ever a waste no experience ever is ever like a waste of time or a waste of space or something like that like everything you're doing is leading you back to your truth and that's and that truth is is love it's yeah okay so let's see how you can ground this main character energy now so to start, we have the Six of Spells, and I'm going to have to look up what the Six of Spells is, or wait, no, it's the Nine of Spells. So, oh my god, I was so excited that, that there's a Skyrim deck, because I love Elder Scrolls, but oh, they did the one thing that just drives me up the fucking wall, and if you watch me, you'll know it, it's, and it's don't change the minor arcana to things that don't make sense, and actually... This one is the mo most egregious, and I'll show you why, but we'll look at the cards first. We also have the Seven of Swords. We have the Six of Cups. We have the Empress. We have the Queen of Pentacles. And we have Temperance. Okay. You guys got two of these cards, so let me just... I'm going to move the Queen of Pentacles over here. Okay. Okay. I just want to look at the what is spells so anyone who knows tarot listen to this bullshit so spells represents adventure creativity and inspiration okay so that's that's wands lock picks which you know they look like swords 
represents finance, earthly materials, laborious pursuits. I mean, honestly, I think the Thieves Guild fits, I just think the Thieves Guild fits way more with swords than, I see why they did lockpicks. Arms, which that's swords, represents conflict, power, and judgment, which you would think arms would be wands, but, or voice, so voice represents emotions, but wouldn't it make, make sense if voice were sword? Like, they fumbled the bag hard, and I'm so incredibly disappointed in them. In, fa in fact, whoever made this Skyrim deck, do better. Read more tarot, play more of this game, because no, I don't approve. So I guess spells are wands. Like, they don't even say if they're, I mean, I'll, you can kind of infer it. I'm just bitching at this point. And you know what? I don't want anyone coming for me in the comments saying, well, why are you using that deck if you don't? Because I'm allowed to use things and not like an aspect about them. I, what? Anyway, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really getting into that. I don't give a fuck energy in this pile. And I really like that. Um, but yeah, anyway. Okay. So then this must be the nine of wands. Okay, all right, I guess that's a nine of wands. Convoluted point, this is a nine of wands and I am so insanely disappointed in that deck. It's so cool, it's so amazing in all the other ways and they just had to fuck it up. They just had to fuck it up so hard and they did that. Anyway, <laughs> so with the nine of wands being here, I definitely think that for you, there is a need to look at where you're still incredibly defensive. And actually, I just displayed a great example of that because I've talked about before where I'm like, listen, if you're a tarot card creator, like stop making the minor arcana things that do not even remotely relate to the suit. Like, for example, in one deck, wands are acorns. Like that doesn't make any damn sense. Like I can see pentacles being coins or cups being chalices like what like you could change it up but like don't make it so different that it's like impossible to know what you're talking about or requires like to look in the book every single time that's kind of my point but you know obviously well the point of what i'm saying is is that like i was defensive there because it's like i just want to talk about a problem without being like well why do you need to do it me, me, me. it's just it's just it's just noise that's the point of what it is and i think what you need to know is is that like that noise doesn't matter. Like it doesn't need to hold any power over you. Like I'm not gonna stop bitching about that, like ever. So it, that's just something to be aware of. Like, you know, so for me, there's no point in me being defensive about it because people that don't understand why I'm gonna do that, I don't, I don't need to defend myself. Like, I don't care. Like it, maybe I care a little bit because I'm being defensive about it. Maybe that's something I need to look at within myself. But see, that's actually what I'm doing right now, I think is actually what you're meant to be doing with yourself, which is paying attention to, especially when you shift into an energy that's not neutral. Like when it, when it is magnetized enough to like register as, or it's just powerful enough to register as something like defensiveness or something like that. That's when you want to think, okay, why am I feeling that way? Like, is this really, is this really something that is truly bothering me? Am I truly being attacked right now? Or is this just something annoying and something I just need to let go of. Because I, I do think that something that you and I share at Pile 3 is that we both are par very passionate about things. And for me, I'm just very passionate about stupid shit. I'm very passionate about stupid shit that could be fixed to be way better, but that ends up being stupid. It just makes me angry. And, you know, and then, and that, I guess, causes people, some people to be angry that I am using said thing. But you know what? they can suck my ass. Like, it's my channel. I can do what I want. I can bitch about what I want. Like, they don't have to do the same thing. And I think for you, you know, what you're meant to realize is, is kind of the same thing. Like, just in, just flip it to your own circumstances. So, you know, whenever you are feeling attacked or you just, or you are triggered and it's like, and it may not be that deep of an attack, is there a deeper root somewhere? So why don't I just rake myself over hot coals? Where could that defensiveness come from? Could it come from a wound of feeling criticized and viewing criticism as rejection, as I'm doing something wrong, something like looking at how they link. How, okay, so you, you've seen energy, all right? 
and it's causing you to put your walls up. All right. What's that energy? Well, why, where, where that, where, where might this response to that energy come from? Okay. Well, why did I develop this response to that energy? Like seeing how they connect because Amphrodite always says this in the Knight of Wands too. He always says, um, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I think that in your case, a lot of your self-development and growth is going to come from doing the hard things so that life gets easier. And I think that you might be avoiding or resisting certain changes because it seems like they'll be hard. But what you may not be realizing is that the things you're doing now that are not working are actually harder than it would be to make the shift towards what's actually going to support you. So I feel like what the universe is trying to get you to be aware of is that change is not necessarily as hard as it's perceived to be. It might just be that it seems hard because it's different, but once you get into the habit and the routine of, of changing things up and doing things more aligned with what's working for the version of you that exists now, you're gonna be able to, um, you're gonna be, how do I finish that? You're gonna be able to see how your hab how change actually, while difficult, can make life so much easier for you. And I, I think one thing as well with this Seven of Swords card, I think that the universe wants you to talk less and do more in the sense of, you know, you might have a lot of ideas and talk about things you wanna do, but I think the universe wants you to kind of keep your plans to yourself and keep your goals to yourself. Not because anyone may be shitting on them, but because you may find that you want to change them, that you want to shift them. And it's almost like there may be things... I guess with this leaves card here, you're kind of meant to be a little bit more ruthless towards what isn't working. And let those things fall away. I almost feel like for you, there's that, um, oh, okay. I, so the reason why I paused was spirit was showing me this visual of, of a tree and the fact that, you know, there is a quote around this, and, and that's why Spirit showed me the tree, because they were trying to show me the quote, but I can't remember the quote. But it's essentially something like, you know, you don't want people in your life that are like leaves, you know? They look really pretty, but eventually they change their colors and fall away. You want people that are like roots, you know? You may not see them, you may not always know they're there, but they hold you down, they're solid, they help you grow, and they, they, they keep you rooted. And I think that one thing Spirit wants you to know is, is that you're not meant to have a life of leaves. You're meant to be around people that, not just people, but like situations that ground you. You know, there, there might be an energy here where you may be less open to life because you're worried about losing things. It, it might even be that because you're highly emotional and you do feel things very intensely. Um, and, and honestly, you might be like, I'm not highly emotional, but if you get angry a lot, you are highly emotional. You just have only found that the only safe emotion for you is anger. Um, anyway, uh, I definitely think here with this Seven of Swords, you may not even realize um, I think one of the, I guess, I guess the point of, of the practical nature of this with the Seven of Swords here is that you may be afraid of making necessary changes or you may be afraid of doing what needs to be done or you may be afraid to almost let go of people or situations because you're afraid if you let go, they'll leave your life. And I think the universe is trying to get you to understand that's the point, like you should let go because if you do let go, what is meant for you will always come back. And I think that, you know, holding on to these fickle things that don't serve us, you know, we might form these intense attachments that then create more, um, create more pain when we eventually do have to let go. So with this no strings attached here, 
this is one thing that spirit is trying to get, make you become aware of is what in your life are you so afraid to let go of that you're not seeing how holding on to it is creating you pain pay attention to that with the six of cups here i definitely think that there is more inner child healing that you are meant to address um i really think that a lot of your deepest insecurities come from childhood wounds around um rejection abandonment um shame because if you see this you know jake's like in front of all these scary dudes and i feel like one thing that you need to know is is that you're not meant to lose your child self like your child self you came into this world knowing how to navigate your life purpose unfortunately be, but when we come into this world we are then conditioned by the environment we're raised in so you know even though you had a strong sense of self you were clearly conditioned to not fully embrace who you are and it's clear that there's some elements of your childhood self that you either that you either are unaware needs healing or that you don't even realize or remember is a part of you that you're meant to kind of reintegrate with the six of cups i definitely think that um you're being encouraged to do things that help you connect with your inner child whether it's like consuming nostalgic content or just playing in whatever way is fun for you or um maybe hanging out like if you have younger cousins or children or um you know if you're able to be around kids not in a creepy way like you know they're just so light and fun and they don't think so hard about things life is a lot more simple and i think that honestly you may over intellectualize your problems and you may not realize that the solutions are a lot simpler than you're thinking i actually think a lot of your a lot of the solutions to your problems are simply just letting go and really realizing that they were never your problems to worry about to begin with i, I almost feel like for some of you you may um You hear that it's gonna start storming again um i feel like that's the thing you should know too is that you're someone who's who's built to last through these storms because storms are mother nature's way of kind of hitting the reset button and i think that you should know that there's never gonna be a rock bottom you can't recover from and i think with this six of cups if you're feeling more fragmented if you don't feel like complete or you don't feel like a whole person inner child work I, I definitely think that your inner child you have a hard time embracing your inner child depending on the severe it'll be the severity of it will be different depending on um you know where you're at in your journey but I definitely think that you are meant to just continue feeding your demons with kindness feeding your fear with kindness feeding your fear with love because fear is an illusion of the mind and obviously it has useful purposes like you know to keep us safe but sometimes you know actually not sometimes most of the time our fear is actually not rational while it is still trying to keep us safe it's actually more so uh a tool that holds us back than a tool that keeps us safe and so i think with this six of cups here it's important to remember that you know you're not invincible and that you know sometimes you need held and you need nurtured too i feel like you might be the person that's tough for everyone or that's strong for everyone and i think you're meant to remember that you're still a child at heart too and you deserve to nurture yourself as well we have a lot of mother cards here so i don't know if for some of you you are a parent or um your mother was a very significant person in your life but i definitely feel like for you spirit is really asking you to honor your feminine energy just as much as you do your masculine energy i think i think you honor your masculine energy just a little bit more um maybe because it's it's the more extreme part of you or the more powerful part of you or maybe it's the part of you for some of you that was more um more supported but i think that you are just meant to be more nurturing to yourself and to to continue 
being a presence for yourself that is kind and supportive and understanding like I feel like you're so hard on yourself sometimes and you and you might actually really shoot yourself in the foot because you have all this power but then you hold yourself back because of fear and and that goes to show how powerful our minds can be and how powerful fear can be um but I'm gonna turn the light on really quickly I'll be right back hello I am back I hope things look a little bit lighter um, well, they should because I turned lights on, but I really think for you, this next step is about really nurturing yourself. Like I think more than anything, um, I think you're, you're more comfortable in, in, in your masculine energy. I think it's easier for you to be in your feminine energy towards others than it is towards yourself. And I think that you're kind of in the process of balancing your divine feminine energy with this empress card and i feel like one thing you need to know is is that this is kind of a, a natural process and that's kind of how the feminine works um you know the feminine is not so structured and planned and action oriented the same way masculine energy is you know the feminine principle and the feminine energy goes with the flow and the cycles of life <coughs> And as a result, you know, you're going to kind of naturally grow in, like your feminine side is going to naturally balance out with your masculine side. And it's actually interesting because even in this picture, the masculine, the, the, the masculine energy leads, it's in the front of the bone. And so it's almost like your feminine energy is catching up with you now. Um, and, and you're learning how to integrate both. So spirit's kind of giving you this opportunity or not giving you this opportunity. Well, I guess it kind of is because you're living your life, but the point of what you're meant to do right now is to continue, like keep going, keep keep following your path and keep integrating what you're learning. You know, the cool thing about temperance is that it, it, it's literally about balance. It's about integrating polarities. And it's also, you know, about things like higher wisdom and philosophy and things like that. And I think that, you know, your life right now is a constant dance of following what feels right, following your purpose, balancing that with the responsibilities of life, balancing that with what's going on internally, with what's going on externally, and kind of engaging in this divine dance where you're constantly recalibrating and rebalancing to find what works for you in the moment and what doesn't. Um, and with the Queen of Pentacles here, I, I really, once again, I just think that this is about, like the two things that really need to be healed here is your inner child and your inner feminine. So um, I think being kinder to yourself, mothering yourself, nurturing yourself and things like that will be really, really helpful to you. Obviously, if you have a loving mother figure in your life, I think that they could be a really useful tool um, to help you realize where maybe like you can be kinder to yourself or you could even like even if you know you don't have your mother with you anymore like you know you can ask one for their assurance or love um, but also you can ask yourself you know how would they what what would they do if they were in this situation how would they have treated me if I was in this situation I feel like you, I feel like the biggest thing is that you just don't realize how unkind you are to yourself. And I think that's been one of the biggest inhibitors of you stepping into your power is because other people see your power and they're, and some of those people are cruel to you because of it. But the thing is, is that you don't realize that they're cruel to you because of the power they see in you, that you think there's something inherently wrong with you. And in fact, they're really just showing you that there's something wrong within them that they need to address, but they're blaming that on you because they don't have the capability to go within and become aware of that. And the universe is literally using you as an instrument to, to try to get them to see that. But that's the point. Every, everything in your life is essentially an instrument to help you become a, a better, more empowered version of yourself. And I think that spirit is just asking you to keep going and keep flowing with things. Be kind to yourself, give yourself time to rest, nurture yourself. Don't let, um, 
don't let the bad memories of the past either continue to wound you in the present. Those are definitely things that need to be healed. Um, because really, I think that this, this Nine of Wands and this Seven of Swords are kind of the two things left that are kind of stopping you from stepping into this main character energy. The rest of it is just a natural progression that will flow over time. So I'm going to go ahead and now and look at kind of what you need to know about your near future. Um, I just wanted to see if there was like any messages or any signs from spirit that they they just wanted you to be aware of so to start we have harp with great happiness and I feel like this is something that not only you're deserving of but also um the reason why like you know the 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 phrase like quit harping on me I feel like spirit is trying to get you to understand that um they only harp on you because they, they want you to be as happy as they know you could be if that makes sense we also have table hard work ahead yeah it's like you're doing the work to be able to like this isn't an easy job like this is a very powerful thing but it's worth it we also have marriage so wow okay um so this could be the path that leads you to your future spouse um this could be the path that if that's something that you want um this could also be something where if you are already if you're already in a marriage of some kind uh you know they might have some help for you or tools for you like they might be someone who can help you get in touch with your inner child or get in touch with um kind of your emotional side but i i also think with this marriage card you yourself you're in you're a marriage of opposites and a marriage of different energies and you're meant to integrate them as one energy that is you and figure out how that works you know marriage isn't a it isn't a walk in the park it's I mean I've never been married but I mean it doesn't seem like it's super simple for everyone so it definitely takes work and compromise and I think that that's how it's going to be with yourself like your feminine and masculine energy are almost within a in a divine marriage within you and it's like learning how to balance those and work and using them to work together rather than working against each other but we also have haystack karma where you will reap what you have sown and so i think that is it too it's like spirit like wants you to know that we're giving you all this power so that you can empower others and and follow what is truly meaningful to you in your heart but anybody can be jaded by the things that glitter that aren't gold so spirits asking you to remember you know when you when you're following down this path making sh make sure that your actions are in alignment with your truth so that you don't do something that you later regret because you were jaded by an illusion in the moment but finally we also have rat someone is working against you behind your back so i think that this is definitely more oh my god look at how look at how similar these two cards are i really do think the biggest rat in your life is your own internal dialogue and your own inner demons and it's like you have a little rat inside of you telling you that you can't you can't do things and <laughs> um as as a particular here's what I will say you know if there's anyone that that's like this in your life that you can think of that's definitely someone you want to cut out and not keep in your life because they're not meant to be there but also I think the biggest rat is the one in your head that, that you may be unaware of like with the seven of swords here like I think that you may be unaware sometimes of how your own internal dialogue disempowers you and and, and becomes your own worst enemy like you you very well may be your own rat so to speak so we're gonna go ahead now and finish this reading off with some final advice so we're gonna start with a stone for you and you guys have pyrite aka fool's gold it's a metallic sulfide material it's blingy confident vibes and often perfect cubic structure align us with nature's power to give energy to amazing beautiful things like you baby that's so true and who needs it the chronically lethargic and anyone sleeping on their potential where to put it pyrite is often used near the solar plexus so that's definitely a good stone for you um, or will center but it works anywhere you need a little boost of masculine energy for example on the fellas the low low left <laughs> just saying and then when to use it on that romantic weekend away from the kids whenever 
the energy to power through feels shrouded in dark matter call on your core power so i think pyrite or honestly like any solar plexus stones could be really helpful for you i think as well actually something too with this empress and this temperance card is that you because you have so much energy and you do have this drive to succeed one of your your pitfalls is going to be impatience and i think sometimes spirit is going to want you to do things you know slow and steady so that you know you build a palace rather than a house of cards if that makes sense but we also have breathe inhale exhale create space within yeah this is what is going to help you become aware of what is still ruling your subconscious and causing you to act in ways that make you feel disempowered like that which we are unaware of is what rules us so that's why inner work is so important surrender to the magic of who you are yes we all have magic in us even in the mundane aspects of life remember that you are a magical being with uniqueness and worth that come from just being you <sighs> yes my queen Kali herself we will get her message and uh, the last message is be a beginner attempt something new like learning a craft or signing up for an e-course our brains fall into autopilot mode during familiar activities so free yourself from preconceptions and adopt the powerful mindset of a beginner you'll learn a new skill while developing a growth mindset yes so I'm going to read this message from Kali from the Oracle book Let's see what she wants to say to you. Goddess of destruction, disillusion, and ecstasy. You draw upon Kali when you are in a time of radical rebirth. She is fierce, erratic, untamed. The part of you that you're afraid to give full control because you don't know where it will take you. She will destroy all illusion and bring you face to face with your darkest shadows. Not to cause anguish, but rather from a deep place of love. She demolishes the ego that creates the boundary between you and your highest self. She is the ecstasy experienced in orgasm, meditation, bold self-exploration, or pushing a child out of the womb. Kali comes to you in a time of deep liberation, stepping into the truer form of you. Trust the process and allow yourself to release all limitations so that you can become one with the bliss that you are. Well, thank you, Kali. That was beautiful and so true. And um so if you already work with Kali that's a sign that she is helping you but you can also pray to her um if you need help breaking free of any illusions that are stopping you from being your true self um I can only give glowing recommendations because she's only been a like powerful beautiful force in my life that has only led me to more blessings and more light and more growth so um yeah pile three damn uh that was intense but i think i am going to leave your reading here so thank you guys so 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 much for watching and thank you so much for watching my ads or just like letting them play in the background while you do something else that is the simplest and easiest way to support me in my channel if you appreciate what i do but if you could but if you want to support me in other ways you can like this video you can comment down below let me know how it resonates you can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell to be notified whenever i upload a new reading you can also check out my social media which will be linked below though do be aware i have tons of scammers that pretend to be me so just know i do not offer personal readings and anyone claiming that they are me is a liar I, they're on tiktok right now too so just know that i i do have a tiktok but it's very inactive I don't trust TikTok and um yeah pile three that's all I have for you guys so I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye Hi there, Pile4. Welcome to your reading and thank you so, so, so much for being here. If you guys chose the red Sesame Jasper Moon and this stack of tarot cards, this is going to be your reading on your main character energy. So in order to look at that, we first need to look at what your main character energy is. So the way to know that this is resonating for you or not you might find that not all of this resonates as this is a person that you're evolving into and growing into. But if you're listening to what I'm talking about and it sounds nothing like you or nothing like the type of person 
you're growing to be or it doesn't even sound like it's remotely possible then that's your sign that this reading isn't resonating but if you're hearing what i'm saying and it sounds like it could be you but there's a lot of doubt and fear behind it that's a sign that the message is for you you're just your ego is doubting it because you may not believe that you actually have all these wonderful qualities so let's go ahead and start so to start we have the fool card we have the elephant we have wise salt we have the shadow attribute of virgin which is fear of intimate union we have vishnu we also have be open to receiving we also have spirituality, the trigger statement being I am so disconnected and the true statement being everything is connected. It will, be, bleh, it will be beneficial for you to spend time in quiet contemplation. You need to reflect within to find the answers you seek. We also have Neptune. We have the light attribute of mother, nurture, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy and giving birth to life. I want to stress that you do not have to be a literal mother if, if that is like freaking people out. This does not talk about literal parenthood, but I will I will get into it. It can, it can, but I, I will get into that more. Um, we also have love and Isis with protection. Well, because let me be real, the mother archetype for you is really important and it doesn't matter what kind of body you have or what type of role that you typically align with. There's a nurturing divinely feminine aspect about you that matches this mother archetype. And what I really love here, I've, I've been starting with this card for each pile. And for you, I really love this because we have both um, your feminine and masculine energy here. And when I see you as a child, I definitely think you were very carefree, fun, free spirited. And it seems like you were definitely led by your emotions. And what I mean by that is I think you were likely led by things that excited you. You were led by um, impulses of curiosity where you're like, I just have to know what's gonna happen if I try this. Like I see you as being somewhat experimental. Maybe for some of you, you are especially like reckless. I can see like a few of you being um, the type to like always be getting injured or something like that. Um, but for others of you, you might have also felt maybe very shy and reserved because you felt like you didn't know anything and you might have assumed that everyone around you knew more than you. So there could be a little bit of divide there in terms of how you experienced your childhood, but I definitely think that there's there was a lightness to you where you were just happy to be there, happy to be along for the ride. And I think that you were just silly and fun as a kid. And I definitely think that part of you still exists, but maybe sometimes you feel like you have to take yourself really seriously or you have to be, um, maybe you find yourself in caretaker roles without even having like children or something like that, or like parents or something to take care of. Maybe you find yourself in a caretaker role for people that aren't even like blood family, but um it always it just seems like you're someone especially as a child who maybe was very easily like manipulated and things like that it seems like you were very naive and had a very kind heart and there were definitely people that took advantage of that and that maybe is something that you might attribute to like a flaw of yours or something that is bad about you but i feel like part of your main character energy is realizing that this this part of you that's always open-minded that has this beginner's mindset that's willing to and open to learn new things and recognizes that you know you don't know a whole lot but you're willing to explore and learn like that's a wonderful aspect about you because when we look at, at your spread here your life your life in general like there's no one role that your main character energy embodies it seems like you just you are the main character but it's like as you grow and evolve, you're going to step into your role more and feel more secure. It's like I feel like the older you get, um, the more solid in yourself you're going to be. And one thing I think for you that you're going to realize is there's going to be this shift in your life where maybe when you were younger for some of you 
or even now, like if you're watching this in the present um, and this, and you're maybe on the younger side or you're just starting on your journey, whatever, you may feel at times like uncertain of what it is that you want to do or what your true purpose is. You know, with this trigger statement, I am so disconnected, but then the true statement being everything is connected. Um, it might be that in your early life, you follow things that you feel drawn to, but you may not recognize the deeper purpose behind these things that you're drawn to. So like, for example, um, let's say in school you're drawn to theater and you do theater and you're really passionate about it and let's say you do it for a couple years and it's your last year of theater and you end up not getting like the lead role that you wanted and you're really crushed and you're really devastated about it and you're like well what's what's the whole point of this why did i do this i feel like i just set myself up for failure and what you may not have realized is that the whole point of you doing theater was not so that you could get your lead role in your senior year but it was more so about you developing the skills to be able to talk in front of an audience or learn the skills of acting or improv or learn how to um act on your feet because like that's improv right so that's just a small example um but it's kind of like the way in which you interpret the elements of your life has the potential to make or break you. And the thing is with this wise salt card, it's only going to break you until you realize you're tired of being broken and you're ready to make it. So, because this is what's really cool, is with this wise salt card and the elephant here, this is the most evolved fire card in the in this animal deck. And this talks about someone who is incredibly wise and incredibly... Um, mature and someone who has gained wisdom through the experiences that they've had and the thing that this wise salt card talks about is that your wisdom comes through experience and that none of your experiences are truly wasted and so you might look back on things you've done in your past and think I can't believe I did that or why did I do that that, that was such a waste of time or something like that and what you're not seeing is that it is an illusion the what you're going to realize if you haven't yet is that your deeper purpose and when you truly step into your main character energy, it's when you're doing something greater than yourself. And that's when you, that's that light bulb moment for you when you realize like you will derive true fulfillment from, from doing something that is more than just serving you. So this is where this mother archetype really makes sense because you don't have to be a literal mother. Though, for a lot of you, that could absolutely be the case with Isis, love, and mother. Love is a divine gift that you have. Your heart space is one of your biggest gifts. You have the ability to feel love and feel it deeply and understand that sometimes love is an act of self-sacrifice, but not in a way that's detrimental to your well-being, but rather in a way that's balancing your own needs with the needs of a greater collective, the needs of people beyond you. So with this Vishnu card being here talking about balance, your main character energy is really going to come into its stride when you realize that you need to be in balance with how you are serving and also your ability to be open and receive. Because I think one thing that you will be really good at um, when you start stepping into your own energy is giving to others. And maybe you've always been that way, but it, it's a selfless giving that doesn't leave anything left for yourself. And when we give in that way, it can really deplete us, make us deal with things like fat, compassion fatigue. And I think for you, you might get kind of disillusioned with giving you might give to the wrong sorts of people and you may interpret that as okay I cannot give any of myself to someone because they will just take advantage of that they will just abuse that and so like that is, for example is a lesson that you're meant to learn where it's okay it's not necessarily about all people being like this but it's about me knowing when I'm not applying that love in the right spots or when there's illusion around what love really is. I think part of your life journey is learning about what unconditional love acts actually looks like, especially unconditional love for self and unconditional love from the universe to you. Because I think that you are very loving and you have a lot of love to give, but where you get burnt out is that you have a hard time receiving. 
So with this virgin card being here, the shadow attribute is a fear of intimate union. So while you may feel really comfortable on your own and giving and creating for others, you may be really uncomfortable with receiving that energy back. In fact, you might almost, when before you realize this is a pattern, you may actually give all your love to the wrong kinds of people because when you give your love to them, it affirms the insecurity that you have within you that you're not good enough. And so one of the things that you're meant to realize is that the salt in those wounds of you're not good enough, they're meant to make you realize that you are and that you deserve better treatment than that and that you deserve people you deserve to have people in your life that are going to have a balanced give and take relationship with you. And what you might not realize, especially if you're a giver, is that balanced relationships do exist and that settling for something less than someone just taking all of your resources and energy, you know, it, it might be kind of trippy to, to change that up at first. And it might be weird to have people give back to you this the same way you give to them but that's what will help you realize that's like what true intimate union with another person is and I don't mean that in like just a romantic context I mean in any context in any sort of caring relationship the the relationship should at least be balanced to the point where both parties are satisfied and the connection adds to each other's lives right obviously that's an ideal and like we do have connections with people where it's not like that but you know that's that's an opportunity to work with someone and try to grow and you know work through issues so that you both can have a more harmonious relationship whatever type of relationship that may be um essentially what i'm seeing here is that you have an amazing capacity to give and to love and you can either use that for purposes that help you and others, or you can use purpose it, use it for purposes to be self-destructive and give away what is so valuable. So, and what I mean by what is so valuable, it's your time, your attention, your love. So with this Isis card being here, I do feel like for some of you, family life will play a huge role of your main character energy. Um, whether you're a parent or, you know, you kind of have a family of your own creation, it kind of seems like uh, if, if marriage is something that you want or something you're already in, like you're definitely a very good partner, someone who's very devoted, not only to their partner, but to keeping things together, like the home together in the sense of like, just wanting to make sure things are, things are, good for the both like you're just very caring I guess is the point of what I'm trying to make and when you channel that energy into the right places including yourself you'll realize what a true gift it is because for example I want to talk about motherhood for a second especially you know for people who are mothers or people who want to be mothers or fathers or just parents anyone who wants to be parents this is definitely a part of your role. And I think that actually, when if you are not a parent yet, when you do step into that role, that's, that's probably a time where you'll almost feel like, okay, it kind of seems like this is what life has been preparing me for. And for some of you, you know, it will be like something that, that I think makes you realize like, what truly matters and what doesn't like it is actually interesting with this anti-aging card i didn't even think about this but maybe one of the reasons why you hold yourself back um for example with this full card here you know maybe you're you were the type of child who just liked didn't like much responsibility maybe you kind of avoided responsibility and avoided um you know the the deeper things of life or like the the aspects that make you uncomfortable, even though you have the capacity to tap into it, it may have just been that you like to keep things light, keep things on the surface. And I think maybe one of the hardest um, shifts for you is going to be, you know, getting older and thinking, well, does that mean that I'm not relevant anymore? And does that mean that like, it's all downhill for here? My life is over. And Spirit's really saying here, no, like, your life's only over when your heart stops beating, like straight up, like your whole life is meant to be a progression of you gaining more wisdom and being able to 
like you, your main character energy and its most embodied form is like the wise parent that leads to the wise elder and even if you're not the parent of literal children it's people that look up to you people that see you as a guiding figure and i think one of your hardest challenges is going to be finding someone who or not finding someone but but learning to be comfortable with people giving you back the, the same love that you give them or being open to receiving love from people especially ones that you may feel like are better than you or something like that. Like, I feel like you may put people on a pedestal and not realize how amazing you are yourself. And I feel like one thing Spirit wants you to be aware of is that there's a difference between, you know, putting up like, putting up a boundary and putting up a barrier. And I think one thing that you're meant to realize is that, you know, your intuitive sense and your fear, like, Neptune is a, is a trippy planet because it's it's the mystics planet and it can either be used for deep wisdom and spiritual truths or it can be used to feed illusions and things like that. And I think for you, um, the harder, more traumatic elements of your life may be experiences where the fear of ever recreating that event or, or being in a similar situation keeps you from being open to life and being open to what life has to offer you. And so this process of coming into yourself and realizing you are connected to the universe and that, you know, you're not out here fighting alone, like even if it, it sometimes feels like it, but it's almost kind of like being your own mother in the sense of, you know, your life is about nurturing yourself, being patient with yourself, being unconditionally loving to yourself and finding the joy in giving birth to life. And life doesn't necessarily have to be human life. It can be in creations. It could be in whatever it is you're trying to do or helping helping others it, it really doesn't matter it, it's just in for these purposes it's just an archetype but I definitely think that one of your biggest obstacles is learning to be open with others because I think that you may be very distrusting of other people and very distrusting of um, people's intentions and I think that part of your life journey is to learn that you need to be able to open up and reveal yourself so that you can see so that hopefully other people will, will reveal themselves too, or at least be open to people trying to give to you so that you can kind of understand how important it is to have balance. Like it's hard to recognize that something is unbalanced if you're always used to giving and you're used to someone else always taking, if that makes sense. But you'll be shocked when you realize, you know, when you have a balanced relationship with anyone, whether it's a friend, family member, romantic partner, whatever it may be, when it's balanced, it's usually a hell of a lot easier and it's not so draining and it doesn't wear on you. So really your main character energy is when you're standing in your truth and, and trusting in your own intuition and trusting in the experiences you've had thus far and trusting in where life will take you. I think the more you connect to your intuition and the more you trust where you're being guided without allowing yourself to make up stories that don't serve you, I think I think that's gonna be really helpful. Like one of the biggest things that I think you need to know is, is that you don't need to know. You don't need to have all the answers and that you're not going to be perfect. No human ever is. But what's really cool is like the older you get, just the more evolved and wise you're going to be, the more you're going to understand why you had to have certain experiences. And I think honestly, like, for a lot of you, I would not be shocked. I mean, both Isis and Vishnu um, have really devoted, loving partners. You know, for Isis, it's Osiris, and for Vishnu, I believe it's Lakshmi. Um, but I definitely think that part of your main character energy could also be with another person um, as a couple. And you might actually both be very inspirational um, in some way or another or just be that like power couple that people like, you know, either envy or just want to emulate. It just kind of seems like your life will really start when you realize that you deserve the same love that you give to other people and recognizing how you may distort what love truly is and what what actually gives you true meaning. You know, it's, it's fun to do silly things. It's fun to, you know, blow off our responsibilities and things like that but sometimes it's also fun to dedicate ourselves to something that has such deep meaning to us that it, it's 
more than, you know, parenthood is an excellent example of that. You know, it, it's, it's something where you sacrifice a lot of your, oh, I mean, I can't, I can't speak for people because I'm not a parent, but you know, it's, it's a labor of love, which is what I would guess most parents would say. And that it's definitely challenging, but ultimately a very rewarding and special thing and I'm not sitting here trying to sell parenthood to you like I like either you want to or not but like and whatever whatever you want is fine I'm just trying to stress that like either is okay and um motherhood doesn't have to be just literal motherhood like this mother archetype doesn't have to be literal mother but also at the same time it could be and that's fine so let's go ahead now and look at the tarot cards and see what what you can do to ground your main character energy into real life so to start we have the four of swords we have what is this five of swords okay i have beef with the skyrim tarot because like it's just kind of confusing yeah i can't remember if arms are swords or okay conflict power wind okay yeah it is swords it's the five of swords okay what else we have the queen of wands we have the three of cups and we have the six of pentacles okay so this is really interesting um and actually a lot of these are really more simple than you think I think that honestly, like, spirit's really just encouraging you to not put so much pressure on yourself when it comes to knowing what your next step is or what your what your life purpose is or what the next step of your journey holds. I think, in fact, the more you let go of that and instead embrace joy in the moment, especially with this Three of Cups and this, and this Queen of Wands, like, I think you're going to find that maybe you waste a lot of time worrying about what's going to happen next or or what's where your path is headed next i just feel like there's a lot of unnecessary worry for you and i think you're meant to like learn how to acknowledge that you have worry or fear but not let that stop you from embracing the present moment and having fun like the universe does not want you spending every waking moment stressing about your future what you're meant to be that's that's not living that's just fearing that's just being fear and i think spirit is actually kind of reminding you with this parrot card and this queen of wands um pay attention to your to your words, how you talk about yourself and um, your self-esteem, because I think actually the universe kind of mirrors whatever energy you're getting out. And I don't mean that in like, I, I mean it mo more specifically when it comes to uh, like people you encounter, especially like random people. Um, you might find that when you're feeling more insecure and less confident that people seem like more disinterested in you or like just don't really care. But when you walk into a room and know who you are and are just really confident like hey this is who I am um I feel like you might notice that people people just believe you more and it's like and it's all about believing in yourself and kind of setting that energy I feel like you might you might worry too much about what your external reality thinks of you to the point where you can't even make room for you to look at what's going on internally that that needs fulfilled if that makes sense it's interesting that we have the four of swords and the five of swords here from two different decks i really think that in this case you know obviously um four and five is nine and the nine of swords is a lot about anxiety and nightmares not insomnia not being able to sleep things like that and i think that actually there's kind of there's kind of a twofold thing going on that spirit wants you to be aware of. 
One, I definitely think there's healing that needs to, to occur when it comes to your mindset. Um, with this, I'm so disconnected, but the true statement is everything is connected and it will be beneficial for you to spend time in quiet contemplation. You need to reflect to find the answers you seek. And I feel like you might think that you do that and you might say like, I do spend time alone. I do spend time going within, but do you actually? Do you spend that time alone ruminating about your past, worrying about things that have happened? The Five of Swords is a lot about conflict and um, all or nothing thinking, winning or losing thinking. And I think that this is a sign that there needs to be healing around your mindset, how you talk to yourself, how you see yourself how you see others even. I think that you may feel like you may have this kind of mindset that it's you against the world or that it's you against, um, or that it's you and these select people against the world or something like that. And I think what you're not realizing is that you need to remember that you're connected to everything, not just the parts of the world that you like. You're also connected to the parts of the world that you dislike. And when you see things in your external reality that you don't like or that you judge, that's a sign of something that you need to look at within yourself. So if you're judging someone, usually that's because there's an element of them within you that you don't like. And so, but because you're not aware of what that is, you just unconsciously project that judgment onto them. So I think what spirit is really saying is, there's a need to let go of all or nothing thinking here and simplifying things, which I don't necessarily think you do all the time, but I do think that your idea of rest or what you've been doing to get clarity and rest at this time isn't actually very effective. With this Queen of Wands here, um, this might represent someone else for you. Um, the Queen of Wands is a fire sign, so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Uh, it could just be representing you though, because we have fire here for you, Aries, Leo, Sag, and Neptune, we have Pisces energy, and with the Fool, it makes me think of Uranus, which is connected to Aquarius energy, and it also makes me think of Aries energy, which is still fire, but I think for you, there's a real emphasis around healing your mindset, because I think there's a lot of limiting beliefs that you don't even realize that you have that are holding you back, and with this parrot card being here, I feel like these limiting beliefs might be things that have been communicated to you um, that you've taken as truth that may not necessarily be reality. Or maybe there's things that someone has told you that you want to take as truth, but you have a hard time believing them. And so you may just ignore those things or not take them as truth. I almost feel like there's a need to heal your communication there's a need to heal your throat chakra i guess the point is what i'm trying to say because i think that you probably struggle to communicate your truth to people i think part of that's because you like to keep things light but also i think that you may just have a hard time being open with people well actually i don't even think that's it it's not even that you have a hard time being open with people. I mean, maybe you do. It's not that you necessarily need to be open with people. I just think that there's there's an element of you where you're not being open to what your inner world is trying to tell you. And, and I think it's because you're trying to do the same thing over and over again and, and expecting different results. So I think that you think that you're like resting, for example. And when you're resting, you're not because you're like actually ruminating. And I think one thing that you need to know is, is that um, it will not serve you to continue to do things in the way that insanity the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results so I think spirit is saying when you pay attention to how you may self-sabotage I think that's one of the biggest things this four of swords and this five of swords I don't think you notice how you actually sabotage yourself from being open to good things because what i do see here is that spirit is trying to bring you blessings in in response to your generous nature and i think that you may almost sleep on them or sleep on uh what's trying to be offered to you in whatever form that may be 
because you feel like you're not worthy of it or you're worried that um, there's uh, conditions around it or something like that. I think one thing that you're being encouraged to do is to, to pay attention to what giving when you give and it feels fulfilling and when you give and it feels draining because that will help you notice like what the right types of people to give to are but i feel like one thing that you need to know is is that there are people in your life right now that want to give to you and you may know who they are you may not but i feel like spirit is saying the only reason you haven't gotten these blessings yet is because you haven't been open open to receiving them so there's healing that needs to be done around um receiving and with this five being here and this 50 being on the receiving card i definitely think that that that's one thing that needs to change that um you know anyone who's trying to give to you is just trying to manipulate you or just trying to um fulfill their own means i think there's a need to maybe just do a little bit more healing when it comes to um wounds that you have around vulnerability and abandonment um because it's it's these wounds that you're ignoring that are the key to helping you go out into the world in the future in this beautiful elephant energy in this beautiful isis energy that is like kind of like honey badger don't give a fuck like i'm gonna live my life and i can handle whatever i need to handle and, and trust that i can protect myself in the process so i think one of the biggest things you're learning right now is the difference between i, I said it earlier but um a boundary versus a barrier uh, but also i think that there's a need to recognize where maybe where maybe you're just shooting yourself in the foot or self-sabotaging because you're afraid of having good things and i think that the spirit is saying that's where you want to look at healing it's, it's around your value your self-esteem your worthiness and i also think here with this crown chakra being here that um, there may need to be, you may need to heal your connection to spirit, your spirituality, you may need to hear, heal your spiritual self a little bit in the sense that if you feel too isolated, disconnected from that oneness, it will be really hard to access and feel that unconditional love the universe has for you, if that, if that makes sense. But really, honestly, I think a lot of these are more simple than anything. And I even think with this parrot card, spirit is asking you to pay attention to people that you admire and people that you look up to because those are the exact um the people that you admire and look up to express qualities within you that um you may not realize that you have but you have the ability to cultivate so i think spirit is asking you to pay attention to what inspires you what makes you feel motivated what you also want to achieve and to also look at not everything as achievement in the sense that like, you know, obviously you want to build your own life and be successful and we, as we all want to, but some of the, 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 the best things in life are not an accomplishment or an achievement. They're the small moments that we have with the people that we care about. And I think that, you know, it's those, those, special connections that just uplift us and bring us joy um that are so special and i think for you you're aware of that but you may be afraid of messing something up or you may be afraid of you know ruining future or current relationships um because of the past and i think the universe is saying you know you can't hold people to you can't hold new people to what people of the past did to you but you can hold yourself accountable for healing that may still need to be done around that area and it may not even be conscious it may just be that you need you just need time just time to heal and like with that four of swords you may just need to rest like a lot of these issues may resolve resolve themselves on their own and in fact this the, this lineup could just be telling you where you're at in your journey right now and where you're headed is this beautiful ass main character energy where you're able to stand in your power overcome obstacles and trust in any challenges that come your way there will be wisdom to be gained from it that is so valuable so i just really love this energy and i hope you know that you are so deserving of the love that you give to other people because this is this is really wonderful energy so i want to go ahead now and just 
look at a couple different tea leaf cards to see if there's any signs that you want to be aware of or any messages just take these as they resonate so <laughs> to start we have fire strong emotion passionate love or hate so maybe that's something that you're afraid of as well you know obviously with fire you can get burned and um if there is someone for example that you have a passionate love or hate for um spirit might be saying you know that might be something you want to look at healing especially if it's preventing you from being open to maybe let's let's say you have a passionate hate for someone that's stopping you from being open to having a passionate love for someone else that's something where you want to be like okay well there's someone else that i have passionate love for didn't do the thing that the person i have passionate hate for did so maybe that's an opportunity for me to go within and see what i can what's what's stopping me or what's what's making me feel fear what's holding me back and i feel like the thing about fire that's really important is that even though it can scorch you and it can burn you it can also you know create room for new growth and sometimes we need fire to burn away the impurities that don't that don't serve us anymore we also have crib birth or conception of a child or enterprise so i feel like that this is another sign that like you know if um parenthood or something like that is something you already do or want to do in the future i feel like this is another positive sign that that is the case but i also think that um you are meant to create something really special and whatever that is it doesn't have to be a human um it could be a thing that benefits humans you know whatever it is i definitely think that you are meant to create something really special or multiple things that are really special uh we also have chain a chain of events that will affect your life and we have vine seek out information that will help you so i think spirit is saying you know pay attention to the sources that kind of help you work through issues and pay attention to what kind of helps you avoid your issues because i think that that will be an effective thing to be aware of so that if you're trying to consciously heal and grow you know you can be aware of oh i don't think this information is best for me or oh i think i should check this out this might have some more guidance for me this really aligns with where i'm at right now but i feel like the biggest thing is like you just need to be nicer to yourself and I, I even think this fire like you i feel like you you might shift between having passionate love for yourself and passionate hate for yourself and really honestly what that is 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 mostly just passionate hate for yourself and like the, the passionate love it's not actually love for yourself it's just kind of like your ego's way of compensating for like how little self-esteem you have and i'm not saying that as like a roast like a lot a lot of people like self-esteem issues are, are such a, a like universal common thing and i think for you what you're meant to understand is is that you know unconditional love for self doesn't necessarily feel the same way as like a, a passionate energy like you know what i mean like sometimes self-love can be disciplining ourselves sometimes self-love can be doing the things that make us uncomfortable sometimes self-love can be you know it can be a lot of different things but the point is is that I have advice to give you, so I'm going to do that now. <laughs> We're going to start by looking at crystals for you. And the first one is bismuth. An iridescent crystalline crystalline metal with a stair-step structure that forms when liquid bismuth cools. Bismuth energy is focusing, conductive, and awakening. Who needs it? The easily distracted, burners, or people who are very bored. Where to put it? On your desk in Silicon Valley and in your utility belt in black rock city and when to use it for those looking for some psychedelic influence without swallowing the red pill lie on your back and take 10 or a hundred or a million powerful breaths through your mouth when bismuth is placed on your forehead then break out of tired gray thought thought patterns and get en route to a more colorful energized life rewrite your code with rainbow so this is so cool because that's what, like the rainbows have been coming through a lot and i think that's the thing like when when you feel tired and gray like that's a sign you're not living in alignment with your life you want to live a very you want to be accessing this rainbow energy so that's bismuth and then you guys actually got two crystal cards oh and you also got halite halite is known as white turquoise also known as white turquoise is all about reveling in simplicity often the real power exists in what's left out see japanese aesthetics swedish interiors how lights dreamy slate cleaning energy helps you discern exactly what you don't need so you can train your focus on exactly what you do 
who needs it overstimulated minimalists living in a maximalist world and where you need it, where, where to put it, wherever you need some breathing room and when to use it, when you need a break from the never ending onslaught of DMs, meeting requests and trending stories, less is more, none is most, how I can help organize your headspace. Yeah, definitely think organizing your headspace could be very, very helpful. So let's see what else we have. We have nature, notice the harmony around you. I definitely think spirit might be kind of saying at times when you get really caught up with things or you get really caught up, especially in your own head, like touch some grass, please. Uh, that will definitely be what's best for you. But we also have surrender your fear of change. The universe is reminding you that you are cared for always. Whether you're afraid of a change in your job, your health or a relationship, or you fear aging or death, repeat the affirmation, I have faith that all is well. And finally, we have a word that I'm probably not going to pronounce correctly, but it says tasias, maybe? But we're going to look at what it says in the book. So, and I've pulled right there, love that. The subtle essence of intelligence and courage, radiant and glowing. Your intellect and courage glistens in your eyes. You have a radiant glow to you that reflects your passion within. You are on this planet for a reason and are deeply committed to your, to your higher purpose. You carry a spark of energy that uplifts those around you and are a natural born leader. As a warrior of love, which I love because you are, um... You are committed to raising the vibration of this planet, even if it sparks controversy. By being your highest self and committing committing to your truth, you encourage others to do the same. Con con continue sharing your spark with others who have lost theirs. So I love that so much. And I think actually you should screenshot that if you want, because that might be helpful but pile four i think that is where i am going to leave your reading i know this is supposed to be about your main character energy but i feel like this kind of like went off the rails a little bit but i think spirit kind of got the message out that needed to be said so thank you guys so 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 much for watching and thank you so much to everyone who watches my ads or just lets them play in the background while you do something else that is the simplest and easiest way to show your appreciation for me and my channel and what we do here but if you would like to support me and my channel in any other ways you can like this video it helps me so much you can comment down below let me know how it resonates you can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell notification to be notified whenever i upload a new reading you can also check out my social media as well as my merch that will be linked below though do be aware as i burp that uh there are tons of scammers that pretend to be me oh my god i can't stop burping there are tons of scammers that pretend to be me releasing the negativity of course i'll be burping when i talk about them negative ass motherfuckers but anyway <laughs> um yeah there are scammers that pretend to be me so just know i don't offer personal readings and i will not slide into your dms offering you a personal reading i can barely text my friends back so thank you guys so 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 much for watching i hope that this reading helped i hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and i hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye